And sentiment coming up 10 o'clock on uh, Friday morning is also something that is considered to be um, a little bit of a gauge anyways. There is an inflation expectation portion uh, to the Michigan sentiment number. So uh, that was a dollar that you were just looking at there. Downside in, or sorry, my bad, it's a 30-year uh, downside in a pretty big way here on a daily chart. Uh, two days in a row, pretty red candles uh, coming through. Yields across the board have reversed entirely. Uh, which is interesting given the uh, weakness in the overall market. Typically, you don't see these moving one and the same. But uh, back downside in a pretty good way here for uh, both the 30-year and the 10-year uh, currently back to basically day lows. Here's Intel about to go red on the day with that uh, news coming uh, midday this morning about 1130 uh, with a new chip being launched from Intel. It's given it all back, back to uh, red. One and a half percent here. Meanwhile, for Tesla, still holding on to 175. Uh, pretty good morning out of the gate here. Held 172, ripped up to 179 for Tesla. A very kind of block board. A uh, little bit of uh, positivity coming from Techland. Uh, banks are mixed. Remember, Friday kicks it off. Big banks uh, going to report Friday before the open. Then we're right back into earnings uh, season. 2.8%, meanwhile, for NVIDIA. Pretty ugly day. Uh, downside QCOM offsetting that. Uh, at least one of the chip makers is uh, having a decent day. Back to uh, the upside to the tune of 0.6. There's Tesla green on the day. Uh, a few other negative names sprinkled uh, around this market today. Visa, MasterCard uh, among those. Two and a half percent there for GE. We were commenting on the strength that we've had from GE over the past uh, couple of weeks. Uh, yes, yeah, stocks fall ahead of uh, inflation data. Bitcoin back through 70,000 at one point today. Here we are rolling over as we speak once again. Uh, we were discussing a number of things if you were with us uh, in the pre-market this morning. Um, I mean, there's a lot of AI-related stories this morning. They were all kind of secondary in nature, if that. Um, pretty minor. We did have uh, an overall market move that ended up being the major catalyst here for some of these big tech names. Microsoft was top of the list, guys, but uh, I think it was more about what the market did, not necessarily what Microsoft did. Yeah, I think that's fair. Uh, I actually double, I'm not muted, actually, for a second. I'm like, oh, goodness, I didn't unmute my mic, uh, but I'm good to go. Yeah, Microsoft did what the market did, which I feel like it was break, break up at least look like it was going to break higher and then give up the ghost. It's not actually at its lows of the day. Amazon, lows of the day. Apple's kind of relatively strong. We'll get to some chips, I think, a little bit later on. But this was, I didn't like it the best. I was more interested in trading, in trading Alphabet, and I guess we'll get to that one at some point. But uh, Microsoft it attempted breakout of the high, and it was pretty apt that in the midday it was false breaks. Because how many things did exactly this? You had the gap to the upside, you had a clear resistance level, and then right at the open, you're going to try to break out 427 and reverse the entire move. The one thing I usually caution is when you zoom out a chart like this, you want to watch out for breakouts into big overhead resistance. Like that's a decent level, but the level that it fell $10 from Maybe. is bigger than the level it fell $4 from. And that's overhead resistance at that 428 and a half that the Microsoft was trying to take it out into. So you got to be a little bit cautious uh, when that does happen. That said, I mean, I didn't trade Microsoft. Today. I don't know if you, I don't know if you were in that one uh, either, Sean. Yeah, I Google I traded Apple, traded uh, no Meta for me, and then a bunch of chip names. But uh, Softy gave up the ghost like a lot of the market at that open. The thing that's going to haunt me is the meta AI talk because we nailed that price. We talked about shorting that 519 and we missed it. So boo-hoo uh, on that one as we did miss that meta trade and we should not have. Um, we, For me, my t top two stocks today are going to be um, pretty simple, man. Google, as Neil just mentioned there as well, uh, and then AMD. And um, right now we're back into those names. We were messed up on our AMD the first time around, but then, damn, we did it again. We shorted into 170, brought it all the way down to 168 and change right there. So again, some more top stocks. As we talk about AI, I don't have a Microsoft trade. I was saying this is the next sort of shoot a drop for Microsoft would be that 420 area. <clears throat> Not really surprised that we bounced in and around there. I, I think that's what you're waiting to lose. And then 417, 418. Let's go back over and start talking about Meta because that was a really, really big level break there at 519 that we didn't really think was gonna happen and we should have hit that 
early and often. But I, I like Microsoft. I know that's a name that there's going to be a lot of dip buyers in there. And I just want to say, man, every single day, Neil asked me yesterday, um, and then, you know, even on the after show, we've been talking about when's NVIDIA coming back in, and it's coming back in right now. Goodness. And it's been like that for a minute. So we've been looking at SMH as being the new sort of leader of the pack, new leader of the pack. We've been talking about this obviously for a year and a bit, even more than that. SMH, wow, we shorted that on that break as well. SMH coming back well, well off its 240 high, but still well in the pocket here, as you can get a little bit of everything with this one. Apple long, AMD short, Intel short, back to the desk to talk about Meta. All right, um, Meta, again, AI-related um, headline this morning, but uh, the bigger move coming with the overall market here, back towards uh, some prior resistance, as uh, Sean was mentioning, trying to bounce off uh, 510. I mean, they're going to release um, this Llama 3 uh, version coming up um, summer of 2024, but we get to, uh, quote-unquote, smaller versions of that. Uh, next week, TD Cowan with a note on Meta today as well. Yeah, and they're they're taking the open source approach to it, Brando, which is getting a lot of people to use uh, their LLM and incorporate it into theirs. So we'll see how well uh, they're able to distribute that. Also, TD Cowan had a good comment on them today, maintaining the outperform rating and increasing the price target to 590 from 500. So good look for Meta, but. Tough trading day. Yeah, one of those days when you um, you look at you know the headline, you look at the catalyst, and then you look at the market, <laughs> and you think, hmm. Uh, but yeah, it was more about the market here as well. So I mean, I don't. <laughs> no, sorry, I'm very. I, no, I, I got the email to here. Maple Leafs round one home game one tickets now available. And Daryl walked by with her lunch, that's all. And I still want walks by with food, and I kind of give, like, the look. But it was just the chicken. The rice. Uh, oh, you have that. Yeah, the rice in our salad was very sketchy. I threw it no, out. I threw, I threw it out as well. It wasn't cooked. It wasn't cooked right? I don't know. Anyways, uh, our lunch was yeah. lame. Um, you, can, you can talk about Meta. Like, like Microsoft, I mean, I didn't trade Meta or Microsoft today. It's like everything but. Like, it's like every single Mag7 name but the ones we listed one and two seemingly got traded today. So... Uh, yeah, Meta, was that breakdown that you were mentioning on the morning show there, Sean? Yeah, I really love this Meta trade. We just got into some Apple right now as well. So Apple not on the board either, but Apple coming in right here into this low one more time. So 168. I just want to make sure I have the stop orders in, and yes, we do. So too much of a breakdown here on Apple. We're going to get out as Apple um, weak against the market, but not. Apple started the day nice and has been falling pretty aggressively here into some of these bottoms. So let's take a shot here on a brand new long for Apple, 168.62. Let's see if that can print upside a little bit here. Put some offers in and around 70, and then maybe we'll be lucky enough to see if it can fly from there. But yeah, no, we broke down Meta yesterday, and all that I said was very, very simple, and I just got to stick with this, but everything we've been doing has really been working so well that I, sh you know, to add something else to this is, is definitely possible. It's just I'm getting a little like information overload sometimes. We talked about meta, and the thing is, what I mean by this, like I don't want to confuse what I'm doing. What, what I'm doing already has been elevated, so it's like, just thinking about this, we'll add this to the toolbox. I said that the one breakdown that we probably wanted today, if we were looking short, was going to be meta. The problem is, I was feeling very bullish. And the reason why I said meta was yesterday, it finished down when the NASDAQ finished up. It had a nice move into the close. We weren't really going anywhere this morning. Then I was like, okay, if we break this 519, then we are definitely looking for the short there. The problem was we did break uh, that 519 and we weren't there for the short. So a little bit, definitely a missed opportunity there uh, to grab that 519 short. We nailed it, but unfortunately we weren't there to take advantage of that trade. So, uh, but what we are trying to do right now is let's go. Maybe we'll get a little, there it is, okay. Uh, we'll get two pieces out there, a 70 and a 70 and a 69 again there, as we'll take the double barrel outs right there. So let's go. We're just, we're stacking. This is what we do in the afternoon. Like if I was on that midday show and talking about different styles of trading, it, the same things happen pretty much all day, but in the afternoon, especially at this time, you know, if you've already made your day or even if you've had a negative day and things start to go in your favor, you don't need to hit those big home runs. Let's just start to stack up a little bit and there's some more there for you on Apple as we wait for an Intel, by the way, which is bouncing back to the upside. But that might be something to do with chip names, and Google that's on the Ooh. board, guys. A big deal today, or at least something, with Broadcom. Let's go find out about Google.
The uh, VMW or VMware um, services to uh, Google Cloud in return, Broadcom going to get some of the yep. AI tools from uh, Google. So initially this thing relatively strong out of the gate this morning, all the way back to 158. But um, yep, here's the overall market coming into effect. Anyway. Yeah, I mean, Google was one of the like the, the standout Mag7 names today, at least it was when I was trading. Uh, there was an, another uh, headline with respect to ARM, uh, also teaming up with Google here for what they call the Axion processor so we'll have to see how that does obviously arms processor uses less energy and it's more mobile Brendo so good for some mobile devices it's still green on the day here but uh, definitely a lot better early on this morning yeah it doesn't look as bullish as it did it, from like 9 30 to about what's that 10 o'clock and it was very bullish on on alphabet and look I've I only went long the stock it, it'll be it'll be the third best for me but I mentioned this in the midday or in the lesson of the day about how when Nvidia took 850 and this broke back down, it was actually in that moment a bit of a short trade. So I like the catalyst. I love where this stock was, like trying to break this top back out again in the daily, back into 158, off the 55 level. So I love resistance turning into support, and that was the notion behind the long trade. But what ended up happening is if you just looked at the rejection off that wick high, in that aftermarket move, it would have been absolutely fantastic. So, you know, when we sat down this morning, it was the first thing Adara was looking at on the, on the watch list, and it was the first thing that I had my attention to. The bias ended up working, but you had to be very picky with your dip buys and make sure that you, you know, didn't fight it too hard. Uh, all of a sudden, it got to VWAP in the afternoon, and that was a great VWAP or trace. But when you're bullish on something, you don't necessarily have to flip gears. You can always look for a little something else, because there were other shorts I guess we'll get to, we'll, and we'll talk some chips when we're when there's nothing to say for Tilray. We'll we'll switch that to chips and talk about those because I think that's where the better shorts were. I mean, there it is. It was a great idea. Podcast, check it out. Wrong wrong button. Sticky note. It's the number one. I think this. I think we're we've been really on fire with some of these lately. Intel's starting to make a move back up. Number one idea on here was to go long Google. It had the catalyst, it was breaking out. The explanation's there, at Trader TV, Sean. Um, almost 50,000 followers, go see if you can uh, join that party and we'll get going on that. But Google, the number, like Neil was mentioning there, uh, his third best, my first best, and the number one P&L stock here today. Huge move up, um, we took it early. We actually got the 56.40, but first break we actually had was this pre-market break high. This took a lot to do this, but we did it anyways because we believed in it and then it went. Risky, like we could have made a lot more money if it just went immediately, but instead we started to get little nervous hands up here thinking that we weren't gonna go through all these highs, but eventually we did it. We got some out at 158. So some good longs, definitely well traded um, today and yeah. The number one idea, we all were on that one. Watch the Star Trader TV live, um, Sticky Note Nation, and yeah, Google, great trade. Uh, my largest holding, I really like the name. Take advantage of names when they do this that you like. I feel like Adobe's one of them happening right now as well. But Google, good name and all of that. Intel, starting to go back up to the upside there here. There might have been there's something here, like a, maybe seven or eight minutes ago. Yeah, I have the news. CNBC yeah. there. It's yeah, just that their chip's gonna be a lot cheaper, a heck of a lot cheaper than all the rest. So that's what I'm hearing right now in my ear from Benzinga. Their new Gaudi 3 chip is, just listening to this, two times more power efficient than Nvidia's H100 GPU. So anyways, talking about all that. So we'll see where that is, but interesting news there for Intel coming out right now as they have their conference ongoing. We were out and in and out and in in this name. We got stopped out at 38.50 the first time. Then we nailed that short right back in right here and just starting a new short on this news right now. Next, next position, 38.40 for another short. All right, um, crypto was uh, on our minds this morning as well. A little bit of follow through to say the least here. Back to the downside. Uh, 70,000 comes back into play here. I just brought up coin, I mean, IBIT will give you a better idea of uh, actual price action here. We uh, come right back and fill this gap uh, back to 39 today after the nice gap to the upside yesterday. Yeah, a bit of a tough look for crypto today, Brendo. I mean, Bitcoin now down 4%. Ethereum barely holding on to 3,500 at the moment, down 5.4%. That's after... Um, 
Coinbase got uh, another uh, maintaining the uh, overweight rating by JMP Securities, increasing the price target to 320 from 300. And in, in great uh, ironic fashion, everything is red in crypto except Mara. Somehow. Go figure. Go figure. Um, that's Bitcoin. Ugly, ugly red candle forming here. Reversal of the past two days, guys, so far for BTC. I don't know. I mean, like the... So Mara hasn't really been going up when the other names are going up. So why wouldn't it, uh, when everything else is going down, why wouldn't it uh, go the other direction? And I think that's something we've been mentioning. There isn't the same, there's a disconnect happening going into the 18th and the have, uh, and the having uh, that's been happening to Mara and some of the other miners. So I, you watch out for that. Uh, I, look, I, had, I told you guys I had one look for Coinbase, and that was, well, somebody, Kathy Wood apparently was selling um, some more Coinbase. I don't know if it was at 260, but I'm presuming 260 was resistance a couple of times recently, and that's what I wanted to short into. There was just in the market strength at the open, Coinbase was no part of it. So there was no trade in 260, which is fine. Like, you know, sometimes it's just, it's not going to set up. Uh, you're not going to get the entry you want. Like I can, I can look back and in complete hindsight, look at this 254 level or look at the 250 short and say, well, you should have, you could have been doing that, but you move on to the next. Just one little update here. I'm in Amazon because somebody, a couple of people in the chat, I shouldn't say, there was multiple people in the chat were pointing out this 185 breakdown on Amazon. Uh, so yesterday's lows and then all morning it was a low. So I did short it on the way through, got some out 184 and a half and just put a reload in front of 185 here in the, in the three quarter range. I want to get some tighter to 185 even. So that's like a new, did not touch Amazon at all today but when it broke that low, worked into the short. And if it holds under 185, I think this is going to be solid. If the, and if the, even if I get stopped out above 185, if the futures start trending down, I'm going to be working back into this. I just feel if the futures trend, and let's go to the NASDAQ, if they were to, say, fail this range and just get back testing some of those lows, then Amazon should have some shorts in it. A lot of these names that have gotten to that top top and pull back, uh, Meta's a good example of that. You know, got to that triple top, 52-week highs, start breaking down, you're going to get some profit-taking. And Amazon's done well enough that I think it's starting to get, fall into that category. Yeah, oh, we're talking about crypto. All right, well, I thought I was going to go on Amazon. Trading. We were out of Amazon. We were just in it, but we just got taken out as, as it has started to trend down. We're going to be up on Amazon today, but again, could, could always do better. But uh, I, I still like that look uh, there for AMZN, hopefully uh, fading off that 185. I do like that. But I mean, back to crypto. Let me just check out some of the coins here because I actually unstaked some ADA and sold some. So I actually got out um, of some Cardano. So that's probably going to wind up being a fail. But the thing is, I get out of these coins, so it's kind of like a martyr. The minute I get out, everything goes higher. So I'm doing it for you guys. Um, but here we go. Nice moves today. I mean, not in the last 24 hours, I guess. Some of these moves have come back in a little bit. So Solana, 174. Crypto was bouncing this morning, man. You guys saw it was 71,000. Looked like we were going to get a lot higher than that, but now you're falling back in again. So some of these names, as we look here, have all turned red over the last day. So Dogecoin had that beautiful run. Shout out to Nimit that was talking to me about Dogecoin. Uh, but that's now 19 cents. So I think I had a high of 24. Um, so that was something to, you know, look at. And I just think that, you know... We talk about it, um, high tide lifts all ships. And it's just like, as Bitcoin can go, it can bring everything else with it. Ethereum is probably the next, as we talk about what's going to be happening here in the summer with some of the approvals of the ETFs, which are no doubt going to be there. Um, I mean, the inflows that have happened with some of these names has just been pretty huge. So I don't see why they would turn down revenues like that for an Ethereum ETF. So we'll see if that comes in. Intel's pushing back down a little bit here. We did not get more short. We were close to getting that, uh, but we were waiting at 40. So it didn't come into 30. But as Neil said, let's go talk a little bit about crypto and figure out, or about marijuana and see if there's anything going on with those names. Uh, no. Uh, <laughs> big gap down for uh, Tilray. It did bounce off two bucks there initially this morning, but uh, has done absolutely nothing since, if you missed it. Uh, Tilray reports worse than expected on the weed side of things. <laughs> but hey, more people are drinking. 
<laughs> Seems like it, Brendo. Um, look, guys, uh, here's, here's the revenue look. The revenue rose 30% year over year to about $188 million, still below what the street was expecting. They were looking for 198, not 188. Also, earnings grew nicely. I mean, uh, well, narrowed the loss, I should say. Last year, this time, they lost $1.2 billion. This time, about $105 million. But really, it was, like, as Brendo mentioned, precipitated more by alcohol sales and marijuana sales. Yeah, and if you have a look at um, any of the other names, here's just MSOS. Not doing much today. Yeah, look, look, obviously, I said this morning I wanted to short into 235 on Tilray, so... These are not real prints, those dark pool wicks. It got into 225. I was on the offer when it popped here. I didn't get filled, obviously, because I was sitting too high. Uh, pun not intended. And then this flushed into two bucks. So there, wasn't, there just wasn't a trade for me, and I wasn't going to chase it because, like, anything and everything was uh, just as good, if not better. Look, I, this is where I pivot to the chips because, hey, if we're talking about, if we're talking about some of the cannabis names... I feel like that's not a bad sub segue to the other style of chip, the one that doesn't make you uh, want to grab more of them to eat, but the one that makes you want to make that bank. Uh, and that's been leading the market, and it has been the AI craze. And what happened over in, what, what happened in Chipland today was like this simultaneous uh, breakdown that happened. Whether you're looking at NVIDIA or whether you're looking at uh, SMCI in the moment, I don't think AMD broke down at the same time, but it, it, it might have. But NVIDIA was dying all morning long, and you're like, wow, how do you, why would you short the bottom? It was, it, it was a floodgate situation where that 850, and let me just go to the higher time frame chart. Let's go to a 15-minute chart. Where 850 was this double bottom on the 15-minute and a breakdown I think everybody wanted, or at least was looking at. And then SMCI was simultaneously breaking $900 as well. So I opted to trade NVIDIA over SMCI. I think if you took the SMCI break, it was right away down at 882. So without a green candle, it was like a $20 move. But the problem with SMCI is getting filled. And like, I don't know what price you're getting when you take that break. Sometimes you're slipped like a dollar. I got slipped 12 cents on NVIDIA. Like I got 88s. And like, so shout out to Real Trading and the Edge X, sorry, the Edge A um, stop order to get in because I got 88s first takeout I got a couple bucks and then it did this this is a real wick down to, th to 834 and then slam back up and I had a trail at 40 just got in and out it was one shot for me and then from there I was trading uh, Intel all morning long and then we talked about this in the lesson of the day Intel had an event today so it was short early short again and then I reversed into the long after they talked about the new Gaudi chip and all that, all that good stuff. But I, I took the reversal breakout at 38.20 into 38.5. Once it didn't hold, I just got out. And I haven't traded it since. If anything, I kind of, I know you're saying 38.4, but I kind of like this double top at 38.5 based on where it was yesterday. Like, that looks like a pretty good, like, short up here, tighter to the 38.5 for Intel. I just know if it's going to hold that 38 level. So I'm probably going to get into, I think I get into Micron before I get into Intel because I want something relatively weak for those chips. And for whatever reason, Micron is just chilling at the low of the day and been low-key the bigger dog in terms of weakness. So I flipped on over. Like the second Intel wasn't the easy short for relative weakness and had that news, I went into a long Intel in and out, and then I went short Micron off 123 as previous close. So this is relatively weak. I think for the afternoon, this will be my fade play. Pops into VWAP. Thank you very much, Micron. And one thing I love doing is I, I flip from relative strength to weakness back and forth. Intel too strong. Find something relatively weak in the space, there's always going to be something out there. That's the beauty of the chip space. There are, there are more individual tradable names in this right now than I think any sector. So it's like the day trader's dream. Like you don't like it, you don't like uh, NVIDIA one day, go to AMD. You don't like AMD, go to Micron, go to Intel. They're just, uh, there's something for everybody. Look, my number one stock. Um of the year is probably NVIDIA. The number one stock here today is NVIDIA. Um, yeah, I mean, stick with the chip names for sure, I would say for now. I just ran into my buddy in, the, uh, in Tim Hortons. He works there. Congratulations on the promotion. 
And um, yeah, he's telling me that that's all that he trades is, is are the chip names. So when he gets a chance to do that. We just reshorted right here AMD, by the way. Um, we got a pretty decent price, not the best, 67s. It just cracked through 50 and we didn't take that there. So I'm gonna put a bid now. Actually, I, I think I, I put it at 49. I was trying to get it on the way back up. So we're bidding 49s, probably relatively irrelevant because this high is 170. So we wanna get a little closer to 170 before we do anything too crazy here. So um, we are putting on a position right now, you know, and again, this will probably be about a third, maybe a little less than, maybe 25% or so of what we'll have when we get up here. So let's start it as a starter position. If we could just start to scalp it out, like we said, start to just level it up, then we'll do that. Um, that's what we're doing with Apple, you know. The thing is, I was trying to let this thing go, but like it doesn't want to break 80 or 75s here. So if it comes back up, we'll take another piece out and see if that wants to work. Um, AMD short is now coming back in a little bit here. Let's see if we can get it again uh, back to the upside. And then Intel, of course, is just hovering and doing jack. Um, but, you know, there's so much to trade uh, here right now, including MSTR. We looked at that. This is similar to that, that um, uh, SMCI there. We talked about what would happen when this broke 1400. It did break 1400 uh, here today, right here. Uh, and when it did, what happened? It only, I mean, I don't know what the, it only went down 10 bucks. Uh, came back 30, then flushed again. But again, like, I don't know what the spread looks like. So it's very, very hard to sit here and say like, was your, was it was a there? tradable level or, you know, but anyways, nice move down and now you're just kind of ticking up. But like, look at the spread yeah, even look at now. The daily. Yeah, it just looks pretty nasty. Uh, but nice move down there. It's good, definitely getting into some support. But long story short, too, too much of a spread here for MSTR. And then Coinbase is probably, yeah, it already broke that 250 earlier on as well. So Coinbase down four and a bit. Wow. Nasty downgrades and everything happening around there. So, Like, you have to ask yourself if um, I'm not going to, like, if Bitcoin were to lose a 68 and go 65, and if the NASDAQ, you know, let's just, let's just say you get, you get this uh, Meta, Amazon, um, Google, and Microsoft, the ones that haven't gone. Let's say they yep. pull back and the NASDAQ gives another 5% and maybe Bitcoin gives another 7 8 10%. Like, what do you think Coinbase is doing if those things happen? You know what I mean? Like, Coinbase ain't going to pull back 5 for 10% if that's the case. Or, I mean, MSCR is an, is an extreme example of that. Like, I think I, think I just saw on Sean's chart 1,100 was the 50-period moving average, and it's at 14 right now, if I wasn't... The 50 period on, on Coinbase is 40 bucks away. That's 15%. Like that would be a somewhat reasonable uh, pullback for coin. So when you start thinking about these retracements, uh, it does get interesting as, I feel like someone just turned a light off or something next to me. Uh, there, just got a little- They did, they did. Little mood lighting in there. Uh, yay, thank you for the wick in the afternoon. Like, you know, what's, what's the afternoon without a dark pool wick on Amazon down to 180? Uh, it's not printing 180. I just got, I think I must have misplaced the stop in there. Eh, it happens. I'm running on four hours of sleep, but it didn't break 185. There is a wick up here, and then for some reason I got out at 90. So if you see me back in at 92, that's just me having the short get stopped out and then just jumping back in. That ends up being like one or two cents better, but who cares? Uh, short to 185 is the plan. The low is actually 184. Uh, 35 for anybody, not that crazy wick to the downside. So it's about 50 cents off the low of the day where I'd want to be taking profit. That's Amazon, which is still relatively weak. We're done the rundown. Uh, what about Mara? Mara is up 2%. So I think we were talking about this in terms of not caring what's going on with the rest of the group. And it's been going the other direction, which is down when some of them have been going up. So I'm staying away from Mara. I just, when it's counter trend like this and is doing this action, like, I still think overall it's relatively weak, but the short's been better when it's in the 20s, and now it seems to be catching a little support here in the teens. But I think, you know, that 16 level was really good, and it seems like 17, 18 is catching a little bit of a bid for Mars, so good for them. Oh, I'll just recap NEO, because I'm still in this from this morning. There was a big gap up on all the Chinese uh, EV names. Uh, just some talk with Yellen and, uh, from her trip in China. There was a pop-up. 
Neil had resistance at 480 on the 15 minute chart, so short at 76. I'm still in the last piece trying to get some 460s out. And now Neil's in that part in the, that time of the day where it's not really moving. So I have a trailing stop in here for 70, and then I'll just wait for it to either go down to the low of the day or break this 470 uh, level. Uh, Brad, Brad in the chat saying, "Let's do a poll. Who watches the Masters?" Can I ask you a question? Like, are, don't less people aren't less people watching golf because of this whole? No, uh, because live golfers can play in the Masters. Oh, so but like but the other tournaments are like yeah. yeah. No, but the live golf is kind of a joke, honestly. Well, I, it's you, like, you know, but I don't really watch. No, these guys, I, I like some of the concepts, but these guys play in shorts and there's like they're blasting music all over the place. It's fine. I, I, like, it's cool, but it's not like the traditional. So, like, guys are out playing like hip hop music? Yeah, like, basically, yeah. And you're like, your caddies can just like wear, you can wear like tank tops and all that stuff. Now, someone that's like, you know, if someone, if Phil Mickelson, if you're watching, I mean, I'll come to live golf. I mean, you know, there's no problem with that. But the idea here is, is that, you know, they paid all this hundreds of millions of dollars to these guys and good for them because oh, honestly, yeah, yeah. it's such a grind. Like if you're a professional athlete and you have that talent, I mean, sign, sign well, the deal. Get deals. paid, get paid, man. Um, there's a question about, you know, Saudi money and what's all that. So th I can understand that side. I'm not saying that that would bother me. You know what I mean? Uh, but at the end of the day, yeah. Buster I'm Rhymes excited. had a song about it. <laughs> I'm excited. Yeah, exactly. That A-Rab money. I just think that you have, you, you, you have, the Masters is, it's so fun to watch. It's like the sort of the thing that kicks off spring. Um, I don't know. Uh, it's, you know what? I'm not, a, I don't a watch golf. It's great time for sports now. I don't watch golf, but the Masters is right. like. Right, everybody. I, on Sunday, well. Look at AMD, I'll by the way. I'll watch the Sunday. That's it. It's that sport. It's this time of year. That you, that you get Jim Nance and, and the Final Four. That's it, man. That's and you it, get baby. Jim Nance and the Masters, baby. That's what it's all about. And you get uh, AMD that's going to the downside. And like you mentioned, there's a chip style. Whether or not it's guacamole I want to, you know, use with those chips or a little bit of salsa. We talked about that. Uh, it's AMD that goes to the downside right now. So we cooking, baby. Um, we just, again, more shorts, please. More shorts, please. So here it comes for AMD. And the shorts right now are printing. So let's just continue that and see if we can keep the momentum going here with advanced micro devices. Although I could use long, like, I'm, I'm close to putting my sweater back on. Aren't, my hands are freezing. Uh, at least it's you this time. Yeah, I don't know. Like, maybe what a, it is what it is. Uh, so Amazon, okay, I'm not going to be able to get rid of this wick. It just keeps on coming back. It's like the cat came back. So I took some out there off the 60 level. If it bounces, we'll try to get some more 90s. But it went a quarter in the money. And when it does that, and that's halfway to the low, we'll go ahead and try to cover some. Just going to get back on the offer at the 90s. Intel didn't quite get up to that 3850 level or not even close to it. And Micron wants no part of a bounce right now. So it's tough, it's tough shorting something in this tight of a range when it's right at those lows, but I do know I want this one because it's so weak. K Devs, any thoughts on Rivian? You know, we didn't look at Rivian today. I know because it wasn't anywhere near that good 10 long. I just feel like all the roads are like the closer to 10 it is, that's where the long was. Like you got actually like 10.01 and then 10.05 or something two days ago. And then yesterday you could have had 10.10. And now Rivian is diddling in the middle. We're above 11, you know, 11.50 is a good short level. And 10 even is the good long level. So I really don't like a stock like this. I just really don't want to be trading it in there. I think you got to, you know, get it in when it's good. You know me. I'll, I have no problem slapping the fail on myself for staring at 10, waiting for it to break, huh. and then watching 10 be oh the God. great scalp long. And sometimes that's how it is. You look at a level when everyone's watching for it to break and is excited about a big double bottom or triple bottom on the daily. You know, if it doesn't go, what do you think is going to happen? Or like if everyone's sitting there excited for a flat bottom break when it's trending down, if the level holds, you're going to get a nice relief rally because there's some people that are fading into that level thinking, yeah, I'm just going to anticipate the break, and they're shorting it down into it. And when it doesn't go, you get that nice retracement. Until this gets into the 11s, I don't think it's that much of a short yet. I just realized I, I don't have... Well, I realize also I spend way too much money on other things, uh, all family-related, of course. But, like, so the Leaf tickets are basically gone. I got in. Uh, for home game one, playoff round one, so there are going to be hopefully a lot of playoff games happening for the I, Maple I Leafs. so. Um, to sit at the very top of the bottom row was $520 a ticket. I selected them to be like, are you, are you for real? And then they disappeared, so someone took them. And then I went to see, okay, what are they up top? To sit at the very worst seats up top were 380 
a ticket, and they're gone. So those all got released at like 2 o'clock, and basically every single ticket is gone. For home game one, round one. But here's my question for you. Were they the actual worst seats? Because we have never mentioned this, because we used yeah. to have bill season tickets. In the first year that we opened, started our trading floor, we st it was the first time we'd, we'd had our own business. And I think we got, a, I would say we got a little carried away with, hey man, let's do some expensing. And we had leaf season tickets. And we were, I don't know the section, but this, it was a Sprite zone. And the ones that, they were against the wall, remember? It was no, all the way up that, at the top. And we were literally against the concrete in the upper section. How do you not remember this? I don't remember that they were the very top They row. were the worst seats. And I remember it well because when I saw, um, I was at the game when Sundin got the hat trick for his 500th goal against Montreal near the end of the season. Oh, okay, okay. And I remember like, the view was, like I showed my dad like a picture or something and he just started like laughing. He hates the Leafs. And he's like, what kind of garbage seats do you have? I'm like, there's not bad seats in the ACC. And it's the yeah, least. Yeah, normal stadium, Everything else but, is so um, expensive. But this is a different year. It's, it's right, different. right, right, right. I don't even know when the last time someone scored 70 goals in the NHL was. And you have, and you've got. Um, yeah, he'll have, he has 65 now. Cruising. I hope he can get 70. I don't know if he'll get who is, 70. Who is the last person to get 70? Uh, Brett Hall? I don't know. Um, yeah, I, Solani got 70 goals. Oh, yeah, Timu, Timu Solani. Yeah, a couple people got 70 before, but there's only been seven players in NHL history to have gotten 70-plus uh, goals. Gretzky, I think, did it four times. Maybe Brett Hull as well, Mike Bossy, so on and so forth. Shout out. I'm trying to think if I can name one of the ones um, you didn't just say. Um, yeah. Eiserman ever scored 70? Uh, yep, Eiserman did, yep. Um, okay, so here we go. Uh, AMD came back a little bit. Apple's not, so we, we already got, we got out. We didn't get out of everything of AMD, but it did fall back in into VWAP. We actually, we got that fill at 45. Remember we were talking about that? We should have put a bid down there at 25 and we didn't. So let's go back and put that up there to see if we can get a fill back in on AMD. Oh, I was still looking at SMH actually, uh, but let's put a bid down there for AMD. Let's just put it at 30. I mean, we don't need to be exact there. That would be pretty good to get something. Okay, come on. Uh, if that one can come back in. We did look at Tesla earlier. Um, there was talk there about, like, we don't really ever trade energy names. True. So you're right about that one. But I love energy. I mean, being diversified uh, and being Canadian, of course, you know, we're taught to buy lots of energy. And I, XLE has been an absolute monster. And I actually, I'm not out of it. I should start to get out of it, how much that's gone up. So shout out to XLE and everybody holding energy names, of course. Uh, but right there... That's been a great level, and we talked about that break earlier. Remember earlier on in the morning, I said, if you're going to take a break of anything today, I think the break of Tesla is going to be right. We also took Google, which, again, PL1, so we're fine with that. But this was another break that we said right off the open. Like, honestly, we, we had this. Someone asked me about Tesla in the pre-market. I said, it's kind of right here. It's not doing too much. If we got a dip, you know, into 170, we like that. And then I said, if there's going to be any breakout uh, today, you, you can go back and look at 845. Uh, I said, this would probably be the one. I chose Google, should have chose this. Boom, up right there, $5. And then not only that, forget about that trade, it's missed. I feel like the better trade is, I mean, that's the better trade, but a good trade also would be noticing that it came back thing. into that level as well. So, you know, we can hit home runs here, but at the same time, that would have been a great opportunity to either get reloaded if you had some, or to put one on to begin with, because that would have given you about two bucks back to the upside there. Yeah, I mean Tesla. I know we got roasted for this. Like I had, I liked the dip buy on Tesla. It didn't get. It just didn't come into the level. There was a question about why is a firm up today, and I see DJK at Terper asking why is a firm up. DJK saying a firm is up because interest rates are lower. I'm gonna posit that there's always a chance. I mean it's up two percent. It's at the high of the day. Remember, uh, the administration is trying to put through another uh, student loan uh, relief plan. So if some of that debt gets relieved, that puts less pressure on some consumers to be able to pay off other bills, which are heavily yep. used by those that have those debts, which would be buy now, pay later. So if you think of a lot of the risks for delinquencies that a firm has, some of that has to be, it's got to be good news for them if there's a, stu if, if there's a bunch of student loan relief. I can't see any way that that's not a positive uh, for a firm. Whether or not that's the reason that it's up, you know, anybody can say anything. All that said is, I'm just going to point, because every single time someone brings up a firm, I say, just look at the chart. I know, it has, I know there are green days in here, but that is, excuse me, top, lower high, 
fail the 50 period, lower high. I don't even know where the 200 is. 32 is coming. Let me on. just zoom in. Uh, where's that? Where's my 200 period move? There it is. The 200 period moving average is at 28. That feels like it's the next stop. So the next time it gets to the 50 period moving average, which is $38, I think it's a short. And look at the nice wicks into that 50 period on the daily. That seems to me like a get. So it gets above 37 and you start looking for the short off that top. So I hope it keeps going to said upside uh, affirm. But yeah, no trading for me today. Like I'm not gonna go long off the top. Like that's not enough. That thesis is enough for me to take a flat top break at 35 even. I know it, it looks like actually not a bad setup. The market just feels like it wants to roll over. I look at this NASDAQ and I see it's like grinding, grinding a bit lower. I know Frank is coming on <laughs> and uh, he, you, the market sometimes pumps. But I'm not taking a breakout trade on a firm when the market's looking like it's about to break down there on the NASDAQ. Uh, I'd rather, I will short the pop in Micron if there is one, in Intel if it's at 38.5. Yeah, Micron doesn't want to give it to us. And we'll go back to, a, uh, to Amazon at 185 uh, as well. Not really favoring those longs just yet. I'm sure there's something out there that might look okay. And Google was a good long before. But now it's, it looks like this trend down back there into the go. bottom. So if you're gonna, it's going to do that, then wait for the absolute bottom. Otherwise, you know, hold on to your shorts and all that good stuff. Like, I'm really happy. We do have Frank coming, correct? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I am really happy that the market's going down, but we are getting filled here. And that's not because uh, I'm worried about the infamous Frank bump. It's that we're at the high of the day for ourselves right now. AMD's pushing down. We just shorted it again. Um, we, we had put AMD, was the number two name on our sticky note today to match with Google as well, um, as well as Palantir, which we haven't looked at, and then Rivian. We'll have to have a quick look there as well. But we were long AMD off 170, thought there was some, maybe some strength there. Uh, we were wrong, and we were slightly red there. We talked about that. Um, and then now we just put some damage right back on this name as we were like, let's find that top and go short again. And that coincided with, and look, I, I was saying, other two, Adair, Sharif, or Neil, that, you know, possibly this 850 was a better short, and I think it was, but that helped me come up with the trade for AMD. So that's like, the minute that that wasn't breaking, it gave me more confidence to do stuff like this. So um, that's basically what we've been doing. And then I was like, okay, AMD was weaker today than NVIDIA, it's not now. I mean, in the beginning of the day, we had a huge move down for NVIDIA, just thought AMD could play catch up, but it's not really. So let's be careful about this AMD trade for sure. We are already out of two thirds of this trade. So because it was midday, we don't really have too many Fed speakers or anything being rolled out. We have big economic data, which is great to have Frank coming through in the next couple days. So we'll get that to come through. Obviously with this you know, sort of whoosh down in some of the chip names, I mean, this is a daily chart for AMD. I mean, you can't tell me that this looks like a healthy stock. It doesn't, right? I mean, how many red days when you keep on seeing you're still making lower, uh, lower lows as we continue to go here until we run into, or you could say, you know, these highs just keep on getting rejected every single time on these wicks and we move lower. So no matter how you're looking at this, if we don't hold this 160, and again, I don't think we're, it's not an earnings decision for me because I, I'm pretty sure, I mean, unless we're completely getting the rug pulled over our eyes, we've already said the market was rigged. This, I said this about four years ago. How long have we been on the air? The thing about it is, is like, these earnings are gonna be good. April 30th, like I feel like all these chip names will give the goods. I honestly think that. I think a lot of companies are investing that way. It's just, is it gonna be good enough? Are they going to guide forward? Has some of these insider sales that I've been trying to highlight, ha has that sort of maybe potentially run some of its course lately? And, and you get people like um, NVIDIA cashing out there, Jensen cashing out of $86 million worth, or Ching. might even be billion at this point. And they deserve all of that. I mean, I, I think, like, we had that talk about Elon Musk and Tesla and being pissed about Delaware or wherever it was, New Hampshire or whatever, and then wanting to move it over there to Texas. I think that when you make a deal and it's stock-based, I think that that's the deal you make, and it motivates CEOs to do great things. Yeah. And Tesla shareholders and NVIDIA shareholders have definitely made hundreds of millions, if not billions, of dollars on the backs of those CEOs as well. So you want to change the world, have an idea, and start a company. 
And that's the, some, some of the best impact that the world has seen. And, there, and there's profit behind it too. But everyone always forgets the 99 that try and fail for that one to succeed. So the, to tell me that you don't deserve it is kind of crazy. And everybody deserves on a day where the market is trying to go wild, where we had a bond auction, where you have rates going up, we've been talking a little bit about the Fed, and uh, let's get to Frank. Uh, just don't pump the markets too much, Frank. I don't have any long positions. Yeah, a lot to cover here. Frank Caberna back from IG to get us teed up and uh, ready for what is to come over the next two days. We get CPI first. Frank, we'll, um, we'll touch on that in a second. I want to get your thoughts here, though. Two weeks in a row, you and I are speaking, where we're seeing yields coming off after two days in a row, you know, kind of higher to end last week and into Monday, and then a little bit of a pullback here um, today, along with equities which is, you know, as we were saying last week, not necessarily the norm when it, come to th it comes to these. Again, not, not a huge move on, on either front, but going in, you know, to what could be a big deal tomorrow. Um, interesting uh, observation here for uh, interest rates, at least. And, and I think that this is pretty much uh, across the board. Obviously, it's hard to say with the, the stock market because there's so many things at play, so that, that is so many stocks uh, at play that push and pull the S&P or NASDAQ or whatever measure you're looking at for the stock market around. Um, but it, it does look and feel to me, uh, Brennan, especially when you take a look at gold and some other asset classes to boot, that um, this is positioning going into a really heavy rest of the week. Um, and, and thus, I don't put too much to any of the the weird price action we've seen in the uh, last handful of hours. Because, yeah, you, you make a good point that we've seen in the last week stocks sell off on rates moving higher, and now stocks are moving lower uh, from this morning to now on rates moving lower. And, and so I, I think today is just a, a little bit of weirdness positioning going into uh, what is uh, set to be a, a potentially exciting uh, inflation rate out of the U.S., Tomorrow we'll have headline and core headline inflation. Um, you might remember has been one of the more choppy uh, inflation readings here in the U.S. And this is what encapsulates uh, everything, including uh, energy. And I think that that's uh, probably a, a big part of the uh, reason behind the expectation being 3.4 percent, which would be, uh, I believe, the the highest inflation reading in the last couple of months, and would be another uptick in inflation here in the US. Um, but keep in mind that that headline inflation here, and we'll get to core in a second, but uh, this inflation reading, um, including everything, was the one that really dropped heavily a handful of months ago. Um, and that came in the same time that we saw commodity markets like crude oil and uh, certain agriculture markets get absolutely annihilated uh, last year. And, and so, um, seeing this ha uh, headline inflation reading, Brendan, set to pop a little bit higher uh, tomorrow is not that crazy. What will be uh, potentially crazy is if the core CPI doesn't print lower. This one has moved lower or unchanged pretty much every month since the peak of inflation a couple of years ago. Uh, and it's set to print lower again this month at 3.7% versus the previous 3.8%. Uh, um, and now, of course, any surprise to the upside here um, could set interest rate more markets through the roof and the stock market through the floor, potentially, um, given recent trends here. Um, but I, I get the feeling that especially this core number, if it comes in at 3.8 or 3.9, God forbid it upticks for the first time in the last year or so, of trading, um, that might be a real reason for uh, interest rates to take another leg higher. Uh, everybody start wondering if uh, Fed Chair Powell is indeed going to end up cutting rates this year and uh, what that means for the stock market that's moved lower in recent days, but is still a rounding error off of all-time highs, part, partially because the expectation that rates will be moving lower. But uh, this is going to be a huge reading uh, tomorrow here uh, for the CPI. And, and I mean, we've got a bunch of other stuff uh, that we can go through as well. But, but how do you see us uh, heading into 
this uh, CPI here in April. I was sitting here this morning, you know, looking at what is to come tomorrow, the expectations, as you were saying, 3.4, 3.7. And, and my first thought was, what is it actually going to take outside of that exact print to actually mm. move things whatsoever? Because we've seen, you know, months and months here going back three, four different prints where it's been, you know, a tenth here, a tenth there, two tenths really up or down. And the market, yeah, will get that flush initially, but it just gets bought right back up. So, you know, like what, what is the actual number I think that we need to see? I think it's a lot bigger either direction, you know, for any kind of reaction to even matter at this point. Yeah, and, and I, one, totally agree that that we'll get the reaction pretty much no matter what, because if it comes in in line with those expectations, if we get the 3.4 or we get the 3.7 or we get a tenth of a percentage point lower, I think you'll see a huge reaction to the antithesis of what I just went through, you know, stocks really buying that number and interest rates moving lower. Um, so we're going to get the reaction no matter what, but I do agree with you that anything within 0.1 or 0.2% of those expectations seems like you're not going to get necessarily a sustained reaction, um, over the course of, you know, the rest of the week or on into the rest of April. Now, that being said, I think that that headline number does have the potential to be problematic in the sense that it came in at uh, an uptick a couple of months ago. It's projected to come in at an uptick here again this month uh, at 3.4% uh, relative to, I think the previous was 3.2 or 3.3%. Now, if that number comes in at 3.5, 3.6 or, or, or higher than 3.6, then I, I think you have a, a real big momentum shift in the direction that we've been seeing over the course of the last uh, week or so and the uh, chances of, you know, little to no cuts out of the Fed this year becomes really real. And, and I threw these uh, projections at you, and I know we, we talk about this all the time, but something that I've been focusing on with the, the Fed watch tool from the CME, which lets you know what the uh, Fed is expected to do uh, relative to futures trading in the Fed funds rate market, um, what I've really been focused on, Brendan, is the fact that this is the December projection. So essentially what uh, uh, futures traders think the Fed will do by the, the remainder of this year, by the, by the last Fed meeting in, uh, on December 18th of uh, 2024. And until the last week or two, there's been 0% chance of no change in interest rates here for the remainder of the year. And that crept up last week to 1%. And this week, yesterday, it was actually uh, above 3% for a brief period, and now it's settling in at 2%. And you're going to say, Frank, you're crazy if you're talking about a 2 or 3% chance of something happening. But, I mean, we've seen this distribution, Brendan, go from six to seven cuts to now two to three cuts, essentially get cut in half. And if you do get an inflation print tomorrow, that is, you know, it's already expected to be higher than it was previously, and it's even higher than expectations, then you might get that column there that's at 2% start to fill up with the potential of the Fed not cutting rates at any point this year, even though Paul has said so. Um, he has also said, we're not in a rush, we're watching inflation. And if that upticks again, um, I, I think it's going to be uh, hard for them to justify cutting at least in the next few months. But um, uh, I mean, that outside chance has, uh, has upticked here in the last week. And I, I think uh, an inflation number that's hotter than expected uh, could make it a, a, a pretty real outside chance. To uh, the end of last week on the show, but um, on our side of things, but um, I wanna get your take on, let's rewind the clock back to Friday because we get this non-farm payrolls print that also adds fuel to the fire of why do they even need to? Huge monster upside yeah. print at this point. So does it even matter? And I think the market's already in the mindset of if it's Q3 this year or Q4 this year or Q4 next year, it's going to happen. It's just a matter of when at this point. So as long as the economy is staying as strong as it is in the US, like does it even matter when they cut at this point? And I'll tie that into the fact that we also got Canadian employment data 
last week that was negative. We yeah. actually lost jobs on this side of the border um, in that latest print, and we get the Bank of Canada this week as well. And, and those are all great points. I couldn't agree with more. Does it matter to stocks? I don't know. We've seen, to your point, the last handful of inflation and employment and GDP readings that have almost all across the board here in 2024 come in higher than expected. The stock market has maybe had the knee-jerk reaction of lower on the fact that, oh man, we're not going to get these cuts that we priced in in 2023 at the end of the year. But the stock market, like I uh, alluded to earlier, still at all-time highs. And so does it matter for stocks? I don't know. Where, where it really definitely matters for is in the interest rate space and the Forex space. And I'm glad that you bring the Canadian piece in here because Canada has been one of the strongest economies over the course of the last several years. If you're you know, rating that by uh, GDP and, and where they've been comfortable with raising interest rates to, they got up to 5% uh, only to be beaten by the UK and the US in terms of major economic powers and uh, interest rate hikes over the last handful of years. Um, and to your point, their data, your data there in Canada is moving a little bit lower in the same time that the US is continuing to exceed expectations. And so the question becomes from an interest rate market standpoint and a Forex market standpoint, will those markets care about you know, a hotter inflation in the US or the, the hotter non-farm number that we uh, got last week? And the answer is yes, absolutely. Because if the Bank of Canada, they're not expected to cut here this week, but if their data is pointing towards, you know, okay, our economy is cooling, our inflation is close to 2%, let's normalize these rates closer to 4 or even 3%, and the U.S. is still seeing strong data, then that interest rate gap is what fuels Forex demand. Same here with the, the ECB that's set to meet on Thursday morning. We're going to have two huge central bank meetings in the next two days. Uh, with this inflation reading. So a lot of movement in the interest rate market and Forex market to be certain. But this is another one where the Euro area, they only got up to 4.5% compared to the US's 5.5%. And now they're seeing data point a little bit in the South direction. And so if they cut 25 bips or 50 bips here this year, and the US doesn't end up cutting, that might mean a euro dollar market getting back down to 105 or even parity again, uh, the way that it did on interest rates to the upside. So huge implications for the inflation rating in the US and the central bank meetings in Canada and in the euro area in terms of interest rates and Forex markets to be certain. But uh, yeah, in terms of lasting effect in the stock market, I, I don't know if uh, th this is the way that Powell exactly planned it out, but he's getting pretty much a best of both worlds when it comes to the U.S. economy and the uh, stock market here in terms of like, yeah, we can't cut because the economy's just doing too frigging good. And, and uh, that's not what you're seeing globally. And uh, that could have a huge effect on uh, currency markets there. And, and very... Um different territory, I guess, from what has happened in the past in the sense that when we get these cycles and the, the changing of cycles, it's, it's typically everyone and not necessarily just a one-off situation like that. But uh, we glance by it there, but 300,000 plus jobs last week, once again, they did revise the prior month down ever so slightly, but it just keeps ticking along here. Yeah, and it's funny because it seems like at this point, the market has has gotten more efficient than the um, actual data point that comes out because it was such a strong number that you would have expected uh, almost a more volatile move. But I, I think the market is almost like, okay, it's over 300,000, but they're going to revise this down by you know, 20, 30, 40,000 jobs. But that's still a number that it way beat expectations. I mean, they're expecting 200 and it came in above 300. And with those revisions, I'm pretty sure that's the strongest non-farm number in the last 10 months for the U.S. And so, I, I mean, this data continues to chug along uh, as other global economic powers like Canada and, and Europe um, 
are, are ticking lower. They're not necessarily in deflation or in, in trouble. Um, but yeah, if, uh, I do wonder how long the U.S. can continue to outperform as the rest of the global economy does tick lower. Um, and uh, I mean, that'll have huge implications on that U.S. dollar market. But um, I, I mean, we'll see with that non-farm number, Brendan, and the GDP, I believe, was also an outperformance that we talked about a couple of weeks ago. Uh, this inflation tomorrow, uh, we we could be ready for uh, a, a higher than expected number. We'll see. Yeah, it seems uh, everything pointing in that direction. We'll see more to come uh, with PPI. We didn't get to it, but we'll touch on that uh, coming up on Thursday. Uh, when we speak again, Frank Aberna, IG.com. Scan that QR code. We'll see you on Thursday, sir. Thanks, Brendan. Thank you there, Frank. The economy is too friggin' good. It is. <laughs> Way too good. No, but Way that's, too good. Uh, uh, you know it's good when you hear Frank, who's, who's fantastic, and he's all serious, right? Um, drop that. And it is too good. Yeah. I think we're talking about this. I feel like we were saying this last, like late last year, if not like really early in January. Like, hey, man, the things that'll get you to a rate hike aren't always the things that you want. Because if it'll probably mean that things aren't going so great in the real economy, uh, it doesn't mean the market's not going to be going well. If anything, it's usually the opposite, right? Like a lot of times, you get to that point in the cycle, market's been doing well, and that's nothing to do with what the economy is. Okay, speaking of something that's not doing well, I just got into Boeing here. I said I was going to short a pop in the chat. Um, Boeing, yeah, Boeing, Boeing can't seem to get out of its own way. There was another uh, move down in Boeing. Uh, this, I think it was early. Oh, it was actually it was right at noon. I was gonna say it was, I was gonna say it was early afternoon, but it wasn't. It was actually right at noon where Boeing got you its you know what kick once again because there's no such thing as a positive story for Boeing at this moment. Uh, Airbus had some good order numbers, if anything. Uh, Boeing under some more pressure, and I was oh. short it. It got out way too early off the 79, and I it just got a double bottom at 177, and I'm shorting back into that uh, even level. But 177 is a double bottom. Uh, here on the day, and it's at decent resistance on the daily if it gets to 75. Uh, so if it gets to the low, we're going to try to take it out there off that 77 even. Amazon didn't reload. It's about 50 cents in the money, didn't get it. Intel, you know, for a stock that went ham after the Come event. On, Intel. Yeah, like it's not, like it was going crazy after it was so much volume after the event. It was the volume this morning. It's not really doing a lot. I keep thinking it's going to pop and give those shorts, but look at it just go sideways. It was a 10 cent range for the last hour now on, or at least 40 minutes on Intel. So Boeing short, Amazon short, Neil's not moving. I mean, while we had Frank, we did this again on AMD. I mean, we re re reloaded the same price. So that is another right now 50 cent winner on board. So it's like just real quietly, man. I mean, just these two trades, you know, get out of two thirds, reload it back, boom it right back into the downside again. So um, just like I keep saying, man, just stay in your grind. We talk about that over and over and over again and it's become pretty popular. So just keep doing that. Stay with the names that are working out for you. Um, and you know, trade what you believe uh, is is going to work. And I don't know if Intel is going to work or not, but we did short that again. Um, so again, doing as sort of practicing as we're preaching here a little bit. There's the Intel reload as well. So I don't like the name. They did come with some news today, obviously, um, and we brought that to you. So hopefully you're able to see some of that. But um, wow, okay, we're starting to get into a little bit more money here. So that's really nice. We are at the highest spot we've been at all day uh, as, as AMD comes back in. I do have a bit at 160, I thought I did anyways. Yeah, I do, 168.90. What, are you kidding me? Okay, I went to 168.94. All right, well, okay, so we have one at 168.90. So, um, yeah, we'll, we'll wait to see what happens now. As it's 3 o'clock, heading into power hour, we're still here. We still have all these trades on, um, and they're getting a little bit juicier here. But Apple is one to watch out for. We are long now as we just took that fade uh, back into 50. This has been a little bit of a slippery slope, obviously, as it's kind of faded out here. We still do have Apple as a positive stock for us, but... It's not, it's given some back right now. Not much movement here. We're just trying to buy these dips. If the market gives it up though, um, we're gone. So Intel still making a little bit of money. AMD trying to go down. We may just tap out of this Intel. Like Neil mentioned, it just went to the 200 period. We just got short at 26. So nice little out right there to you match know, that though, short. But. The thing with Intel is it always pairs off. 
which is pretty much always about a million in balance. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. But so I don't think it'll you, get to that level. No, but if you happen to be in it, in the money, and the imbalance goes your way, it's kind of like a free roll uh, until it oh, pairs yeah. off at 355. So if you can be in that stock in the money, it's really not that bad to just sort of sit in, there, uh, in and out of Boeing here. It gave 60s into that double bottom. So just ignore where VWAP is on this chart because I'm missing a little bit of data uh, from the rest. So obviously it's just, for some reason, it's only counting when the stock made the move. So VWAP is not down there. It's actually a lot higher up, but a strong bounce uh, the first time back into 177.80, so I shorted it at 60 with that risk. So we get about 60 cents, risking 20 plus slippage, so call it 25 cents. The next pop, I probably sit out. It almost want to see it break out that low, break down that low, I should say. So we're, I'm still in uh, Amazon here, and Amazon, look, we're in that 184.90 short off the 185 flat bottom break. This flat bottom break has gone a total of 60 cents. So I'm looking for it to now break the lows. It's a bit of a gap fill to the next level, which is obviously like 184. Even, but even then, that's only like a dollar. It's three o'clock, so I think it can do it as long as the market keeps the pressure on the bid. We didn't really get much of a rally in that Frank, uh, the time Frank was on. So you didn't even get that 15 minute strength from uh, 245 and three going into power hour. And let us know what you're trading. Uh, did anyone pray? play Moderna, Peter Sun just said. You know what? Moderna, the thing about Moderna, when it, when it came to the upside, the only thing I said was 116 triple top, or maybe it's a quadruple top on this daily, yeah, depending on how you want to look at it. Monster resistance. I was like, yeah, watch out. Don't punch the highs here on Moderna because that's nasty. Anytime a stock moves like this into that much resistance, you do not want to get trapped buying those highs, because if you did and you don't, when in doubt, zoom out, look at the strong, it was the strongest stock that I looked at this morning, and it got to that 116, it's been all reversal since. I don't know if anybody shorted it, obviously we were trading a bunch of chip names at the time, uh, but good luck, uh, good luck if you had the long early, but you had to get out when it got to that major resistance on the daily. Can't say it enough, when a stock goes parabolic, make sure you zoom out and look at a daily chart oh, sure, or a 15 minute or something, something else. Yeah, let's go. Yeah. Um, I mean, come on, let's go. Like, ride the bear, ride the bull, do whatever you are doing today. Uh, it's been another good day here. Uh, it's, I know we sound like a broken record to say that, but look what just happened. There's 75 cents, props it up. There goes AMD back down in to the downside again off of another one. I mean, it's a reload, it's a beauty. There goes AMD to the downside. You know, that's what that is. Watch more Trader TV. You can get all these all of the time. And then look what's happening to Intel. That's trying to go. We'll sit there and see if we can get back a little bit for Intel. In the interesting chart of the day, shout out to Adara for this one. Um, this is blowing everyone's mind, but the EV performances this year, the number one stock for EVs in Q1 is Nikola. It is actually the only EV name that is up in Q1 this year, Nikola up 24.9%, making the NASDAQ look silly, making the uh, S&P look silly. It is Nikola, congratulations, followed by Lee Auto minus 13. Hey, what's up, Tesla, how you doing? VinFast there as well, Polestar, Lucid, Xpeng, and the now defunct, although I have to look up what FSN is now trading at. over. It was up to like three cents yesterday, had like a 30% move, probably down 30% today. Now it's at two something cents, so. Uh, it's getting there. It's getting there. I need to get the back to, let's get the back to 13 cents. Uh, Rivian as well. The next one maybe to bite the, I have no idea. But anyways, this is just interesting. Nicola, go find it at Trader TV, Sean, as we get closer back to and closer right now. We're trying to get, that's 45,000. So we'll see if we can get to 46 uh, pretty soon. But again, thanks everybody for following. Oh, and by the way, just make sure you do the right thing. I just responded to somebody else. I'm not going to show you their message, but make sure it's at Trader TV, Sean. You know, it's nothing too fancy, just like that. No dots, no periods, no like exclamation marks. Same for all of us. Just make sure that, that that's what you're doing because we'll ne we're not going to ask for Bitcoins or anything like that. So just, there, there are obviously scams that are out there. So just take care of yourself and your family and don't get scammed. I mean, easier said than done. I understand that, but just be careful with what you're doing. Um, and then right here as How well. Mullen we wasn't on that list for the worst. 
Mullen doesn't exist anymore, man. No, it's like but, putting on Ride or Workhorse. I know. It's just that Mullen at the beginning of the year was at $14 and is now at 4 Yeah. So I think it's, it would probably have slotted somewhere, I mean, like above Fisker but below everything else. Just for posterity. Because I looked at that and I was like, come on, man. You know, I, I'm like, I know Mullen is worse than a bunch of them. But I guess there's so many of these yeah. out there. Yeah. And look. There's probably some consolidation coming in. Like, not everything, that, not well. every single EV name that fails is going to go to zero. There's going to be some pieces I think that can get picked up, and if you can pick, if, if you find one, uh, good on you. Congratulations and all that good stuff. But yeah, it has not. They're still in the penalty box. It has not been good for any of them. Uh, Boeing, I want to short the next pop, but the next pop is not happening here. Oh, this is the stock I didn't look at. I know when all the Chinese EV names. We're moving today. There was something that we didn't look at that was relatively strong today. And usually, I don't think we usually talk about the Chinese yeah, ADRs without mentioning Alibaba. And I only wanted to point this out because sometimes you want to, yes. if you miss something, you want to look at it. At least, okay, what did I miss? Why did I miss it? Because chips were great. But look at Alibaba, yesterday's high, 72, 34, whatever. And then at the open, it holds the pre-market lows and then breaks out, so it's above yesterday's high, and then breaks out the pre-market high. It has not looked back. It actually dipped into that support level and is going back up. So I just want to bring this to your attention because BABA is consult accumulating at the $70 level, and it did it again here, kind of buying those dips in Alibaba. Next stop, the 50 period maybe? I think once it starts closing about the 50 period and takes 78, it's, all, it's off to the races. Because look at the accumulation at this sucker at 70 bucks. Somebody is buying this thing up the last few months, Adara. Amazon, one to keep an eye on here. The stock not reacting too much to this, but about, um, looks like eight minutes ago, Reuters reporting here that Amazon has invested 20, or set to invest $25 million in a 10-year research collaboration for AI in partnership with the University of Washington, University of Tsukuba, and also NVIDIA. So interesting AI catalyst here. Keep an eye on this for AMZN, guys. I just type Apple when I meant to type Amazon. That's just bizarre. Yeah, interesting story there, but again, 25 million. Meh. Yeah. We, we make keystrokes like that. 25 million falls uh, out of their pockets. Right. Well, I mean, if, if Amazon had pockets, they got yeah. accounts, baby. Yeah, they don't have, uh, yeah, they, they carry on gold bars in those pockets right now. Um, but uh, let's look at Google right here. It's starting to fade out. We did lose Apple there, unfortunately, so we will uh, slap the fail on the Apple trade as that just came out right there against that bottom. We were holding it against the bottom. You, I don't know, you guys sort of saw that. We were in AMD and Intel short. I mean, the Intel short is really... Uh, printing out quite nicely there on that most recent reload. So right back in, I mean, that's, that's been, that's been a nice. Um, yeah, it's either Apple or Google short. That's what I was getting at. It's got to be one of these that, that I'm going to try to short here. Google's still up on the day. It doesn't have to be. We could go over to Meta or something like that, no problem. Apple is red on the day, so maybe it is that break right there. I feel like Google has... You know, the 50 period is sort of sloping down there. Let's have a look at what Apple looks like one more time. So, yeah, I mean, it's very similar if you play off both of those. That could be something there to look at for these shorts. I don't know. I'm not, like, so we'll be a little off of our day's high because of that loss there on Apple. But honestly, we made some back there with Intel falling down at the same time. And then we were able to get that low fill on AMD as well. So we are off a little bit on the high because we weren't able to get anything out for Apple. But at the end of the day... It's pretty, pretty good. We had banks moving around to the low side today because of earnings a single one. Uh, coming up on Friday. JP Morgan, 197, really good level there. Wow, okay, so that would have been really nice. Maybe we'll put that in our pocket for tomorrow. How does 197 look on here? Meh. Yeah, actually, yeah, so 197 held there. We broke through it today, retested back right there and couldn't get going. Yeah, I actually, I don't mind a 197 if that's something that we have to talk about at some point. So that, that's something right there for JP Morgan. So, yeah, Google or, Google or Apple is what I'm trying to figure out myself. Right? Wells Fargo in a bit of a consolidated phase at the top here on the daily. That could be... This, that's an interesting one. Like, it doesn't even matter which direction it goes out of this. Like, accumulation in a $2 range for the month on uh, WFC. So, yeah. This will, this will be an inter interesting one going into earnings. Uh, Boeing sliding further. I'm in the Amazon on, I mean, the news and whatever. Amazon's pulling back, and it's been weak. It just broke the low. So I'm looking for it to at least get to 184 by the time we get to the imbalances. 
I'm, I doubt we get a reload off the 85 level. It doesn't really seem all that likely. Might have to stick a fork in Micron, but Boeing's trying to make another bounce here. So I'm going to look for wherever this happens to curl. Maybe it's right back at 177.80. Might be 177.50. I'm just going to give it, um, give it some room to work. I mean, it's been a short the pop situation uh, on Boeing, unfortunately. Can we look at universal codes? We can look at Tesla. No problems. We got 45 minutes to go. Tesla, ooh, even Tesla's starting to trend back into the downside. Tesla, 174.20. That was the breakout price, as you already mentioned there, Sean. There was a dip buy that didn't get to 71. But if it can't hold on to 174 quarter or 74, I don't see why it's not headed back down to 71. I don't know why this is here. Let me just get rid of that 73 line, which might have mattered maybe yesterday or something. Yeah, so Tesla giving it up a little bit. If this was back above VWAP, I might be looking for a long play. But uh, you're yeah, not seeing the strength today necessarily in Tesla. But I'd rather, I'd rather go back to Boeing for the short. Um, Amazon, obviously, I still like that one. Uh, short Google. Google. Google is so good for the long, but you're probably not wrong about that. As we're going back to Adara. This part of the show brought to you by IG. Get as much as 50 to 1 leverage when trading Forex at IG. Currencies like Euro and USD can require as little as 2% margin rates and offer $0 commissions trading using a Forex account at IG. For a limited time, traders can open, fund, and trade with IG for up to $10,000 in funding bonuses. Terms and conditions apply. So yeah, we went short Google there, you see in the chat there. The, my, my only problem here is if you come over to the NASDAQ, it's like, we've already talked about that 18.4. We literally wrote that level down this morning. It hit it and then just tanked off of it and we touched 18.2. We did break below it though. I don't remember that kind of a flush, but obviously it did happen, 18.160 there. Oh yeah, that was right off, oh no, that was at, yeah, right off the open. Okay, right at 9.30, all right. 30-minute um, chart, so all the way to the downside there. And then we've sort of been bouncing off of 18.2. So that's really where the worry spot comes for me with this trade on Google. So it is my number one stock today, but I, I'm basically, oh, shoot. Uh, it's getting going here. 155.65, we want to get out of this one if it breaks above that. So I just, we were in Apple. It didn't do much. We're short now at 55, just against that 50 period. Like, and this is part of the problem with sort of trading now. Like, we were long at this level. We were long lower than this. Then we got taken out on the break, and now it's just doing its own thing again. I prefer the short because we're under the 50 and under VWAP, but, I mean... We, we sort of said this with Frank, right? I mean, just a couple minutes ago, was that we're not expecting a whole heck of a lot um, here as we wait for those numbers tomorrow. So, um, you know, really no surprise that this market's trying to figure itself out here heading into the close. So that's just something to consider as we wait around and see uh, where this market wants to go as we are short right now, Google, at 55s. You know what the analogy I'm going to use is here? Is like the market today... Hey yo, uh, the market team, we're just showing off Sharif and, and Adara there. Uh, but <laughs> Where's Sharif okay. at? No, the, the shot just went up to that, that desk over oh, there. Oh, 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 oh. It's all good. No, it, it's, it's like the market today is the equivalent of fantasy football GMs waiting for the there, NFL Google. draft to happen. Like nobody wants to do anything. Right. Until they see where all the prospects land and uh, here and there. Ugh. You know, which would be, which is fine. But you know, when you're trying to move Travis Kelsey um, because you've got Dalton Kincaid, and everyone, everybody responds, well, you know, I'm, uh, I might be able to get Brock Bowers in the draft, so I'm not really that Will interested be able to. Uh, in getting. By the way, I'm trying to trade Travis Kelsey to Sean, and he's, he's waiting to draft Bowers. That's why I'm throwing it out there. Uh, but Travis Kelsey's Travis Kelsey. You think of it this way. If you own Travis Kelsey, I'm already watching fantasy. every KC game because of Taylor Swift. I can't get enough. I mean, if I see her in the audience, you know, I'm going to go crazy. But that was, that was going to be my selling point, right. is that... Okay. Right. right. So then you're already. My on daughter board. would love that. Everybody here in the chat. I mean, just, might as well get a Kelsey jersey. Just at tell this, this guy to you know just slide me a decent pick and then. Yep. Make a move. Uh, Disney here. You like Disney? I do. I love Disney. It's made me Disney's, a heck of a lot of money. Disney's up. Disney's bouncing off VWAP. Disney's bouncing off afternoon support yesterday. Disney's bouncing off morning support today. Market is trying to bounce. Uh, so why not look for Disney into the. It's at 92, and I'm going to go for the long here. And this is a double, it's not a double bottom, but it's supported like 117, 75 to 80. So yeah, Disney looks pretty solid. It's been 
in a decent consolidation after pulling back. So you've had a little bit of sideways action. I like it when resistance turns into support. It did it once. If there's going to be a long, I have, a, I have an obvious area where you can get out at that three-quarter mark. So I think at this time of day, like when you say people are waiting around for tomorrow, yeah. then taking a, taking a tight stop trade off consolidation gives you a pretty tight stop out. And then if it works up to the high of the day, well, that's only a 50 cent move. And if you're risking 20, then you are good to go. So shout out to you, Cena in the chat asking about Disney. And then I pulled up the chart and saw something that looked pretty interesting, at least to myself. Go Travis Kelsey. I was really thinking that that number is probably going to come out. I don't know. I'm almost thinking the CPI number could come out lower. The market, I think, is going to really go tomorrow, possibly. Hmm. Yeah, look at this move up. I mean, we just we were just long Apple and got taken out. Then we just went short Google and got taken out again. So throwing back a little bit here um, on this short, you know, sometimes sitting and doing nothing is the right answer. But I don't think it's necessarily the truth completely. What are these wick highs? I mean, we just bounced off 18.2 again. Ugh. All right. Um, yeah, yeah, good job there, Bru uh, Aaron and uh, Joanna Brewster. I mean, we were long Google for a while there until just now shorting it on that 50 period. So we'll give some back on that. I mean, we really like Alibaba. Um, AMD is still 45 cents and Intel is still 12 cents, but we did get out most of Intel down there already. So that was, that's been a good one for sure. Check back on it, SMH. We took a couple, we only took one trade on SMH and it, oops, SMHB, SMH, there it is. Uh, we took a little bit on this already. We went short at 123 there. Uh, we took a first out at 122.65, so we got like, 50 cents, we thought we were doing pretty good. And then went down to 221.50 for a big one, about a buck 50. Um, and now, see, like this is maybe what we should wait for, 223 again, because we've already tested that one time. So that could be something again. Google's having a little bit of a trouble here. Apple is just. Go back to that chart. Apple for a could second. be a short as well. What chart was I it? I knew on? I forgot to say something. I, sh I was going to do this for. What was it though? Oh, no, it was the SMH chart. Oh, because okay. in the lesson of the day, I was talking about like reasons to reverse. And the, what I referenced was. Like even stocks like like uh, Google, which was super strong at the moment when Nvidia gave up 850, simultaneously SMCI was at 900. The other way that you could have noticed, if the chips are leading the market, then at that same moment when the strong stocks turned into like short-term shorts, uh, uh, into lunchtime, SMH also gave up support. So if you weren't, if you're not keying off 850 on Nvidia or 900 on SMCI to watch them, if you just noticed you were giving up support uh, in semis in general. And they had been like the leading gappers and the big runners and the leaders of the market and all that good stuff. So sometimes that can be a good reason to reverse it. Uh, that 223 is also, what is that, the 50 period? We have different uh, colors on. Like, what's the blue line? The blue line is, oh, the blue is VWAP? Yeah, you can't really see. So that's coming into VWAP right now? Yep. Okay, so where is uh, that's what I'm saying. any that's of these? Like Mike? AMD and all that. We're already AMD. short them all. Let's go to Adair and see what's up and then we'll come oh, back. Okay. Yeah, so just keep an eye on the spy in the market in general right now. Fed's Bostic actually speaking. This wasn't, didn't see this on any calendars, but Fed's Bostic is speaking, saying that um, disinflation could be a little bit slower than expected here and that services slowdown would be welcome to see. Also saying that, um, yeah, saying the demand for services is still quite high and that CPI coming in a consensus would be, quote, unquote, a welcome development. So just a few updates here. Market not reacting too much, but Fed's Bostic is speaking right now, guys. Right. Red. The boss. The boss, the boss, the boss man. Um, yeah, see, so coming in as expected would be nice, according to Bostic. So I think it might actually come in, I don't know, like 3.4? What about 3.3? What about 3.2? Then you'll see the market make some moves. As Frank was thinking, just in line, we probably would see a nice move to the high side there. Yeah. As he showed less than 5% of a chance uh, for no rate hikes whatsoever. So, or 2%, I think it was actually, uh, for no rate hikes. So that's pretty interesting uh, to look at that. AMD has come all the way back, but I'm not going to short this. As we just looked at SMH, I think I prefer that uh, than this. So we're not going to reload it. We got a great out down there. I mean, we just have a small, small, small piece left on that one. We are into Intel still, and then we are going to short Apple just a little bit against 169. Let's dare this thing to get back upside. I mean, it's a nice move in the market. 
There's no doubt about that. It's just banking its move back to VWAP. So we could short either the market or we could sit here um, and try to short a little bit of Apple. So we'll put a little bit more on right now. We may feel like that as it goes back up to the upside. We're going to now wait for that 169. Let's let this breathe a little bit. Even though it's 324, the market just needs to take a little bit of a rest here. It's made a nice move up. No point in just layering all the way in because then if it blasts up, you know, we're going to get stopped and we're going to look down and be like, wow, we lost way more money than we should have on that trade. So let's just sit here, be as patient as we can for now, but wait for a higher bid here to come for Apple to short a little bit more. I have the position we want. Uh, well, I have about close to 40% of what we want. So if it makes that move back up, then we'll look at 169 again to put some more, more shorts on the play uh, right there. So that's going to give me a stop of about... 25 cents, so yeah, back into 50s and 60s would be pretty nice. We need that one to happen. So you might notice that I'm in Micron now. So Micron was the one I wanted. Uh, double bottom, well, okay, it's not really a double bottom, but the morning low was 121.50. We talked about the 121 level yesterday for being support, but I got trailed out right here on my short at 123 at the 2240. And then that was the exact moment where you were looking to add. So when it pops back in, there is some consolidation support that turns into resistance. I want to be starting in at that range. So as we get to 330, uh, we'll get some individual imbalances potentially. Like we'll, I'll, I'll pull it up and see if we have anything individually going. But I just feel like this is the weakest of the chip names. And I want to be working into it. The other part about this 120, uh, 122.40 is yesterday's lows was just out in front of it at about the 60 level. So I'm looking for that fade. Amazon's right back at that 185, but it's accelerating in here. So I was, gonna, I was going to jump back in, like auto at 185. Instead, it's like, let it calm down. Let, let's see some sellers. Once it kind of checks up a little bit and shows me a curl, then I want to add. Because Micron's already going, and I already added into that short. I thought we were about to get that Disney long. Um, yeah, so about that long in Disney off of VWAP. Let's just uh, hit the old escape key because Neil didn't get the fill down there. Uh, so congratulations if anybody actually went long at VWAP on Disney. I can show you here that I clearly did not. And then just like that, if you saw I had Micron I wanted to give to the 40. It just took it out. So we're going to jump in and out there. Do not want to carry this too far against me. And then the same thing just sort of happened with Amazon. I did not want to reload. It didn't give me an opportunity to curl, so I'm going to jump out of that trade. I thought we'd be holding this one into a break of 184 for the bigger move. I don't know that there's, there's no news that I saw that's going to cause the SPY to rip. or the, Well, I mean the NASDAQ ripped as well. I just say the market to rip. I'm looking at the wire. I see absolutely nothing. Could just be technically we finally got off that bottom. I mean, it's not the SPY. It's the SPY and the NASDAQ. Like both just ripped, and now we're right into that resistance. Well, I, I need something that's setting up at a key level because the ones I like for the phase just started to break. So if I, if I get a chance at VWAP in here uh, for Amazon, that's about 30 to 40 cents away. I didn't want to hold it to that. I want to be getting back in. But if it's going to wick me out and give me the shot back underneath 185, I might just have to take that. Give it a few sh uh, seconds here or maybe in a couple of minutes uh, to figure itself out. And... I'm going to get in at VWAP for sure, but I didn't want to hold it all the way to VWAP as I will now reconnect my earpiece. Yay. I'm, I'm getting a wired earpiece like Brennan. Let's go. I mean, like a real newsman or whatever. Whatever they call them. Anchor? Yeah. Um, we're going to focus on trying to be a real trader, but not with Apple because it's uh, real trading, by the way, is uh, not this. Um, we've shorted this move to the upside. Now we have the position that we want. Our average price is 85. Look, it sucks um, to be sitting here. Wait a second. Yeah, breaking through 169. Okay, so VWAP is right there at 05. I was just trying to make sure. We are out right now, so that would be 20 cents to VWAP. Sucks. Uh, but yeah, the move is starting to go up. I heard Neil say there's really nothing hitting the wire from what we can see, but look, there it goes. So stupid. I said not too like after listening to Frank and everything and after thinking about it, I came back and was like, yeah, I think the market's going to rip tomorrow. And then um, all I did was short Apple. It was pretty silly. Um, so right now we're short Apple again into this move. I thought it was a little weaker than the market, which it was at one point, but not anymore. Although the market's made a move up. Apple has kind of gone 
okay, there it is. So there's the breakthrough 12. So uh, honestly, that will be a flush uh, of, of my net and of Apple. I Intel just came back up as well. I, gotta, I guess I got to clean up some of, these, um, some of these orders here because I don't need to get too much short here if we're going to keep, keep doing this. Uh, but there it goes upside uh, for Intel. We just took another short, but we didn't necessarily mean to do that. Going against, yeah, SMH is ripping, no surprise there. I mean, look at this market. It's really... Okay, uh, you're supposed to give some back, I guess, if you're short bias and this happens. So we should have noticed that that 18.2, we actually even called that up again. Where's the next short opportunity? Wow, okay. I mean, we are right back now. All right. Um, I'm not hearing anything. I know yeah, Adair's I, been bringing like, some stuff. I just it's got It's Bostic of, stuff. It's Bostic because I just got out of uh, Amazon at 185 for the 15 cent hit. I'm now back in at VWAP. Like, that was a really bad... There we go. Uh, wow. So that was a big move up, but I said I'd wait till VWAP. I did wait till VWAP, and here we are. So we're in it Great. now. Boeing. Oh, Boeing's at 78. Okay. I might have missed Boeing. Let's get an offer. What's up, Adara? So Bostic, who is a voting member, making some more dovish comments here, saying that um, if the disinflation pace resumes, it could pull cuts forward, and also um, saying... Basically, a lot about labor. That's the main thing to keep an eye on here. But some of these moves up, generally suggesting that he said he's open to um, some earlier cuts, depending on what this disinflation data is, uh, basically. So that's the kind of the main thing here. Uh, one quote here to keep in mind as well. If job data signals pain to come, I wouldn't. Oh, I would be open to earlier cuts. So again, a little bit of some dovish comments coming from voting member Fed Bostic. All right, Bostic. All right, all right. Um, yeah, yeah, voting member is kind of one of the Bostic. All right, Bostic. Uh, yeah, that's exactly what it was about, Newman there. Um, all right, so I just went and shorted the NASDAQ here because we just bounced up. I was trying to find an area. Again, like, welcome to the jungle, man. I mean, this is not too much fun in games being short right now, but right back into this level that we had our drop-off moment from in the morning. Like you're really going to get all the way back up to here after making this move, and now, okay, okay, really, we are, we are. Uh, there it goes. Well, I didn't take really. right back up to the upside. That didn't take long. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, as we go, so watch out. There it is, man. Nice move. That's that. That's that open right there. We could have. I wish we only had got that fill, but we did average into this. The Nasdaq is really starting to go here as these algos pick up the story. I guess. Yeah, I got back in and. The only good news is instead of losing like 50 cents, I lost like 25. Yeah, it's good news. But uh, no, it's like once it was news, you can abandon, like I could have abandoned the plan to short at VWAP. I, obviously, in hindsight, that would have been true. But that's the thing. Like part of it being real trading is like you got to show that was my plan to short it. And into strength, I decided to stick with it. And it's okay. Like it's, it's okay to have a plan. Sometimes you want to tweak it. Like maybe you wait for a bigger level, or you just don't take it at all. All those things are in play. Nvidia is taking 850. Where's Te Tesla? Was a strong name. I feel much better about Tesla maybe at VWAP than I do about some of these other uh, these others. It's 3:30. I wanted to double check just to make sure there wasn't anything out of pocket on the imbalance locator. So early look, Visa and Ford, and nothing else. A couple of cells in there on Visa and Ford. Uh, One million and nine hundred thousand. So it looks like no significant early imbalances. If Tesla can hold VWAP and break this out, one seventy six fifty, and it's got some serious room to the top. It's just this was so strong. Uh, the only name, if like if I had to short something, I feel like Boeing. I just cannot see this one rallying as strong with the market because it was news driven. Right. Why they were down. Yeah. Uh, the chip, it's, it's uh, the chip name, I don't know. If it's not at a monster level, give me the one that was weak because of news. So, you know, Boeing, the 178, I'm going to go for that. That makes a little more sense than that VWAP and Micron was probably asking for it. Come on, TQs. Okay, um, we're in this. Uh, okay, I mean, we're up on it, but we're just scalping out little baby pieces, and I don't like the feeling of that. You know, every time we've been trading the, the TQs, remember we said we got that big piece right there, which was that, I mean, we could zoom back out. We just talked about that. That was right into here. That's what we wanted. Right when we started this drop, we talked about that. Uh, we started it down here. We got it into here, basically. Um, and that, that was a good price for us. But again, like, we're, we're flat on the trade. 
I mean, not if it keeps going up, we're not flat on the trade. But if it comes back in a little bit here, like you can see the price, 32s. We just got 28s. Like those are basically, I think we got something a little bit lower than that, 27s and 23s. Oh, we got a 23. Oh, no, we didn't. No, we got 27 was our best fill. Okay. Um, so anyways, as we come back in here, this is what we're dealing with right now. And that is NASDAQ, a nice high move there. I just feel like no matter what Bostic says, that's nice. The numbers are still going to be what the numbers are. So if we come back in just a little bit, let me get a little bit more out uh, right there if we're able to on that downside. We just got a 25. So it's not like we're setting the world. There it is. We got 23 there. We're not setting the world on fire. It's just it is coming back in, which is nice. Because we did make... Again, a mistake, yeah, you know, shorting Apple for sure. I mean, but what are we going to do? I was not really expecting this kind of a move. And when you sort of stick your neck out like we do, uh, everybody, Adair, Neil, myself, every, Brendan, every, well, not, Brendan hasn't really put a trade on for everybody in a minute. But he does. Uh, well, but bring in the live news, when man. We were, no, pressure, but he, there's pressure to get it right, I'm just saying. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I was sort of just talking more no, about know, trading but because we don't, don't – we'll try not to bring you incorrect news stories. Uh, but, no, it's no, just like – you know, some days you're going to have little little mess ups there, but you know, stay like I said, man, stay in you know your lane a little bit here. And I, I know that's a funny thing to say, but we went over to the TQs and we kind of left Apple. We're not dealing with this now. So as the market continues to go up, we did get stopped out right there. That was a bad trade. I mean, fail on that one for sure, uh, and a slap for sure on that. But again, bad move there. Get it back. Focus. Um, and go back over to maybe the market and see if you can find a short that you like. I just think that that move was a little out of left field there if it's just going to be on Fed speak for one, one voting member. But, I'll, you okay, know what? Hold okay. on a second. So right here, um, oh, it wasn't Vanilla Man. Just bring it. it down. It was, you just put, it was Charlie in the chat just said, there's pressure to put trades on when we're all staring at you. There's a truth to that. I think it's, it's certainly true at 9.30. It's certainly true when it hits power hour at 3 o'clock. And you're like, okay, well, things are supposed to be happening. And you saw yesterday, it was easier when that eclipse nonsense and the market was so dead that you're like, you really didn't have to force things in that moment. But when it's moving, oh. that's sort of the thing. So, uh, look, I have one trade on here. I want to buy the dip into Disney if we do get VWAP. We're starting to run on in time here because it's like 3.37. So the, the time to be able to like this dip buy is kind of running thin. Like it gets down here at 350 and maybe I don't do it. But if it does move to the downside like right now, I think it can be okay. Uh, just note that I'm not going to sit on the bid just to, to just get taken out. I do want to make sure we get this at a reasonable uh, time. Disney looking relatively strong here. NVIDIA is back underneath 850. I'm going to double check on Micron. There we go. Micron almost a VWAP. Almost, not quite. 123 would be VWAP on Micron. Get That's down. so close. Ah, okay. I, this is the one I wanted at VWAP, and it came so close, but no cigar. Uh, we're going to go for this one. Again, it never came and broke the level that we like to the south side. So I have Boeing. I may or may not get Disney. And when it gets to VWAP, make a judgment call. I'm not bidding it currently, although I was before. I... Um Go down, get down. Shout out to um, a member that's been here for a while uh, or a viewer anyways. Shout out to Anthony Curry. Loves how focused Sean is immediately shifts gears. So pro. Um, no, it's, it, what, what I was wanting to, to get to at there was just the fact that I actually, I used to feel pressure to put on trades, but you know what? Right now I feel like the way I've traded, especially recently, and we're doing it right now, is the, for me, the writing is on the wall every single day. We, we talk about that, we put up what we put up, and we talk to you guys about going, you know, seven for eight or whatever that it is and, and talking about the sticky note and all that. I actually, right now, what's really worked for me is not feeling that pressure anymore and just being here with you guys and putting on trades and literally just doing what I would do and I used to trade a lot of names on the show. You guys know that. And now it's just like now I'm trying to be much more focused on to what I would be doing if I wasn't on the show. You know, so just trying to sit here, put on the best trades, cheer on the trades that we have, try to understand why we have the trades on, and then do my best from where I come from teaching, right? Um, so, I mean, I've never been taught how to teach, but that's, that's what started this whole show. So um, taught how to teach. I was uh, barely good at school. No, I think I was okay. Neil was better. Uh, back over to the desk to probably the smartest out of all of us. What's up, Adara? 
Uh, this part of the show is brought to you by Trade Ideas. Real-time scanning and alerting used in our desk by many of our traders every day. See what's moving in the moment with Trade Ideas. Check out the link in the description for 20% off. Thank you, Miss Adara. Yeah, thank you very much there, Adara. Uh, so the only new position, I'm going to check the Disney. I did get that micron on the curl. We got 120 uh, to half, essentially. Uh, it was Disney yes. that I was sitting on the bid on. That's starting to roll back over. Okay, so Disney's getting into VWAP in here. If it shows me any kind of a like little shimmy and a bounce off there, I would go into the long, but more interested in getting some bids out. Like 12150 is gonna be obvious uh, here for Micron. Wanna see the 77s on Boeing. Double checking on NVIDIA. Yeah, NVIDIA is underneath 850. Yeah. So as long as that's this has been like a huge litmus. Test. I don't even know why I wasn't looking at NVIDIA instead of Micron. Why? Because Micron was under VWAP and weaker, but NVIDIA under 850 to me, has been the signal that the market is weak. So when it was stopping everybody out, that was NVIDIA cracking 850. It's back under. I think it's a little bit more under control at this particular point. Okay, things look a little bit better now. Oh, yeah, I got to get it. Um, Neo, it's a 340, and I'm just going to get on the bid of Neo. There's even no point being in this anymore. Uh, it just looks like it's about to break higher, and it literally hasn't moved all day long, as you guys, all afternoon long, as you can see. Chinese ADR, not moving. I'm just going to take a midpoint and get out of this thing. No point being in it. Shout out to everybody out there, as you guys. I mean, I know real sees real. We've talked about this a little bit back and forth, but there it is, man. There's the short on the futures, you know? So we put that in, and it automatically, like, you know, we made just as much money on this trade, even more than we did on SMH already. Uh, because, again, you get into something that you believe in, and that's right there. I mean, we talked about it coming back. Th shut out, Fabian. We talked about that coming right back in, into this level right, one more time, you know, into the open and then cracking lower. We said Apple, I, because you're there, Patrick, I almost said Italian swearing there. Uh, but, no, I, you know, Apple can get out of here, basically, and then we switch gears. Shout out to you, Anthony, uh, in the chat, and we went right over to the futures, and Tris tried to find a battle that made a little more sense to us. So that was good, and we, we, we get it back there. So that was good. We still lost on Apple. I mean, I'm not like we're super here proud about that. But look what else happened right there. Stay in your lane again. Um, or we, we said grind that one time. But there it is, man. We shorted Intel as well. It came up. We've been talking about these levels. You know, it's just Apple just went ham. You know, that's it. Uh, so right there, we shorted Intel again, brought that back in as well. So yeah, man, a little bit of a funny afternoon, but we'll end the day okay here as it is 341. Oh my God. Go. And that is exactly what's going on right there. Um, props up to everybody around here because that was um, quite the short. I hope some of you had that as well as we just got a cover down there. Uh, but we didn't get the best cover as it went down to 80. We got 90s. Yeah, a little bounce off the evens here from Micron that we'll have to check up on. Uh, so we got that half dollar and it's catching a bit of a bid. It is 342 already. It's getting on in time here. Uh, there were no, we don't have any uh, imbalances to give you or anything like that. Early look was nothing, no more early numbers. But Bostic moved the market up. It's starting to do that little bit of a retracement. I'm jumping out of this. And I'm going to get back over to, someone asked me what did I mean about NVIDIA. Um, apologies if that was way too fast. All I was simply saying is at the moment that the market reversed into an everything short from just a few things short, NVIDIA took an 850. And then NVIDIA was resistance at 850. And just as everything was looking like, oh goodness, we're going to break everybody out and rip the faces off of all the shorts, NVIDIA did a failed breakout of 850. So it's like... That key level has meant a lot today in the market, and the second it gave it up, everything else had a little bit of acceleration. It's almost as if that was a perfect time to short. Obviously, you could have just shorted and uh, back through uh, at 49.9 or something and gotten a couple of bucks, but uh, to each uh, in that moment. I've been looking at that level ever since we took it and then sort of working off that. So then when it broke down, I jumped into Micron. Looks like it's bidding the 122s. The problem with Micron at 21 down here, and why we'll take the half dollar on it, is it's seemingly holding this range pretty well at 121.50. And this late in the day, I'm a little bit skeptical that you're going to, with 15 minutes to go, are you breaking this kind of a flat bottom on Micron? Probably not. 
So I'll get out and maybe look for this tomorrow on Micron. This 121.50, like that's the kind of, or 121 even I should say, that's the kind of thing that could go today or go tomorrow. Um, more likely that than it happening here today. And happening right now is Adara at the screen. Now let's talk about some of these names on the S&P 500 that are making big outsized moves that maybe we haven't discussed or discussed as much. First, a couple health names on here. First one is Eli Lilly. This one down about 3%, potentially trading lower as the uh, one of these EMA, so it's a European uh, medical body, saying that they're investigating the relationship between GLP-1s and mental health issues. So interesting look here, LLY to the downside. We also have on watch here, Moderna, MRNA. This one initially up at one point over 8%, now up over 5%. This one mentioned earlier, but there was some data that came out around 11 with regards to... Um, positive data for some of its treatments and uh, neck tumor. So MRNA, Moderna, nice look as well. Last but not least here, Cisco, CSCO, getting a couple positive analyst notes from Morgan Stanley and Deutsche Bank. Uh, nice move up about 3% to the upside for CSCO, guys. Like this is, like this is actually a little bit wild. Because you saw what just, okay, anyways, I'm going to go back to, remember Disney? I was like, okay, we're going to back off of VWAP and not take the trade. It, to the penny, just tagged VWAP. And it's not a huge move, but I'm talking like literally to the penny, it bounced off of VWAP and came back and gave you that move. It usually isn't like that, but it's 345. I typically do not want to be getting into something in the four minutes before. I'm usually just going to hold on to something that I already have. So in that vein, uh, let's just not go for the dip buy. Look, the long was when, I, when this was brought to our attention, hey, have a look at Disney, it's relatively strong. That was the moment to get in, right in here off VWAP, and it gave you that move. Pullbacks in the afternoon show, I feel, and, well, in the midday as well. I think the midday to the afternoon. VWAP is a very useful tool. If you're going with the trend, this thing is trend down. How many times have you seen like an NVIDIA short that was it's consolidating down, and then it's like a noon till the end of the day? Uh, sometimes the stock is trending up, it's a bounce off VWAP, and you get what you can get. Uh, so good look there, but I'm no longer going to take that. We're just going to hang on to Boeing in here. Like I said, Micron were out. Boeing came into the 20s. It's been able to pull back about 40 pennies. I'm just going to let it either break this local high or get down to the low of the day. Remember, Boeing had another dump city through a flat bottom in the 180 level, which does mean, aha, Boeing... You're within spitting distance now of that 175, which has been the Alamo for this stock. Go all the way back. It's not an October. Hey, it is the October low, actually, 175. And then it did bounce nicely, $20 bounce uh, just last month off the 175. I think we're going to get a chance to be able to see that again. Support till it ain't. We've seen this stock rally from there. I just feel like Boeing, all it has to do is like go a month without any bad news. And it, no, but I'm, no, but no, I'm, I know. I'm dead serious about this. All it, oh, all it needs, if it can go one month without, some, without a bad headline, a negative headline, the stock is going to rally like 30%, 40%, something crazy. And you won't matter if you get it in a little bit late. It just needs to not have bad news every other day. It's getting a little bit ridiculous. And I know I, I, I complain about it because I, I own shares in it. Because I don't think fundamentally... Like, the litmus hasn't changed. You're still a duopoly. You're going either to Airbus or to Boeing. So all they have to do is figure it out and not have bad news, and they're going to be absolutely fine in the long run. The problem is it's not fine right now. Yeah. Uh, one of the worst names in the Dow this year. Well, I think it Intel, might have no, got overtaken. I don't know. Yeah, it's back and forth. Like, with Intel, Intel yeah. Intel's down huge. It was Intel, but it might be Boeing now. Uh, Boeing, I mean, you just talked about the level, so I'm not going to go over that. Um, all right, the futures, we now have like 15%, maybe a little bit less. I can't remember how much we had up there because we just came in, man, and I mean, it just got into that level. Like, if we're going to play levels, we say this all the time, grind off of what you're doing. So, again, for the TQs, you know, a push into there, a push back to here, we, you know, we're, we're going to do that. Um, also, Intel, we only have two positions left. I'm, I'm agreeing with everything. Whoa, no. Uh, oh, we just closed the chart. Um, all right, let's open that back up, and now I'm dead. You're dead to me, charts, uh, now, because unfortunately, ooh, the chart. No, you'll never hear me say chart, chart. If I, if I hear you say that again, Fabian, we're going to have a problem. Uh, but no. Um, all right, so just, just again, that chart actually opened up real good there. So It's because Fabian said nice. uh, chart, chart. 
Yes, yes, yes. Hopefully it's not because of that, because that is no, ridiculous. No, no, I'm just, I'm uh, okay, so here we go. TQ's right here. Nice little move down again. We'll, we'll, we'll wait for it. But yeah, for right now, it is what it is. Um, Intel, we're getting some out as those imbalances come through. We're just hoping out for a dream here that these imbalances somehow come lower. But without being too stubborn, I am bidding 59.77 right now. So hopefully we'll be able to get that fill uh, down to the low side, which is right at VWAP. Maybe we get that fill, maybe we don't. Uh, but that would be nice to do that. So let's it's nice. see. It's a very nice uh, if that does come in. So that's what we're looking for right now. Um, just a couple more minutes, uh, before, or a couple 30, more seconds. 30 seconds till the imbalances. Remember what I said, it was like Ford and Visa, 1,900,000 to the sell side, and nothing else significant. We don't know what they'll be, but the market did, it was like a Bostic bounce, and then the market looking like it's gonna go back to what it was doing, which was sliding lower, but uh, when the imbalances do drop, we'll let you guys know anything significant, and we'll get the overall number uh, from Adara, which I don't wanna speculate on it, but when you get a move like that, we don't like, know. Yeah. yeah, whatever. I'm not, there's no point. Uh, nothing yet, uh, or yeah, nothing big has popped in there. So really, where's the Nasdaq? The broker, or there's yeah. just nothing. Ibit is, is like really Ibit is the big one on the Nasdaq. It's six hundred thousand, seventy-five to sell. Pinterest seven hundred thousand. All right. I'm looking. Yeah, I don't see anything. Marvell. 400,000 to the sell side. The overall is 233 million to buy. But I think the more notable thing is there is a dearth of big cap tech names. That's the right, a dearth, a dearth, that's the right way to say it there. Thank you. It's, every now and then I try to use, I try to step my game up. I mean, I, we're sitting across from, uh, from Adair and Sharif who are dropping like mad lingo over there. Whereas Sean and I are like, what mad lingo exactly? It's that lingo of char chart and ram ram. No, and all no, no. That. They that's use, not lingo. That's they use talk. school words all the time. They do, they do. No, but we I, don't we don't That was a good one. That no, was a good one. They speak in school words. Like Sean and I speak in like trading words. And by the way, I should say this. There was a lot of times that we'll say, um, like coming back in or fading, and trust me, or or scalp, whatever it is, if you don't understand like the trading lingo that we have. Actually, just ask. Bears versus Bulls is fantastic with this because like he gets it all. So just like you, oh, I didn't understand. What does Sean mean by this? Or I'll say fade, and then I'm not talking about this, which actually need a new fade. Yeah, I should get a haircut. I mean, anyone soon? Uh, but Fabian, there it is, a gloss. We actually have a gloss. We can put these up. So if there's something we say that you're like, yeah, you guys should have something to explain what that means. Right. We can do it, and then when I say it, Fabian can either hit the fade or we can actually get those buttons on our own right. stream deck so that when I do it there and he doesn't do it, I could have just hit a button uh, for that effect, which was kind of a fail just now. Oh, sorry. What, was the, what did you just put up there? What was that? Halt. Yeah, when halt. Trading. yeah, yeah, yeah. We're in a lot of halts today, unless you're watching that DXYZ. Yeah, by the way, what goes up must come down, DXYZ. I don't know if you looked at that chart today. No, I think that stock, there's something wrong with that stock. I'm gonna call that stock a scam stock. 35% down. I would have, you're going to tell me I can own some SpaceX and some OpenAI when this thing was $8? I'd be like, sign me up. But, like, I don't, once it got into that move, it's like, what are you going to do? When it settles down, I will think about what makes sense. And I still have to look into, like, 50% of what they own and then 9% cash. 50% of what they own, I actually know some of those companies. And most of it, like, one-third is SpaceX. Yeah. But it's just a matter of, okay... Like, where is it reasonable to buy? And there's 0% chance it's up here. I mean, for me anyways. I mean, you guys do you. I'm also the guy that doesn't think ARM should be up here, and I've been so dead wrong about that. Um, as was pointed out yesterday, oddly enough. Yeah, ARM is a funny one, for sure, because there's just had so much movement in that name. 80 times earnings, we bro. Thought self, um, we thought... Uh, SoftBank was going to come out and sell, and they haven't really sold too much. But i got to find out about that story to see exactly how much they sold. All right, we're always rushing the closing show, so I'm going to end it off right here. I don't have any more trades uh, to go. We just absolutely hit Intel short at the end of the day. But the queues went. I just wish they would have gone a little bit more. Uh, this will turn out to be uh, number three or so, which is pretty good. As I said, we wound up making more on this trade than we did on the SMH trade, which... 
Again, that was, a, that was a good one, just to give you guys some context there. But again, SMH, nicely done up to the upside. Took out 224 again. There, that was a nice trade. Okay, the more I talk, the more I'm going to be here. So, uh, all right, just with six minutes left, I will see everybody in a couple as well. Brian Shandon come through, and we'll have a great uh, end of the day with the market recap show. Not too much There wasn't on anything on earnings, was there? No, nah, there's absolutely nothing. So. Okay. Just my handsome face. Well, if you're gonna, I was gonna pull it up if there was something in your stead. See, look at that. In your in your stead. Now I'm just dropping all kinds of uh, yeah. lingo that's completely yeah. useless. Yeah. Uh, so look, just because there aren't earnings. Now remember, the key thing about our, when there isn't earnings, you can go over. It's more time to go over the trades. There's more time to talk to Brian. Brian's gonna be on today. Does he have something he's talking about? Do you know? I have no Okay, so Brian will be coming on, which is great for technical analysis. And remember, you got that CPI tomorrow morning. And who made me look at, oh, come on. This always happens where you get to the end of the day. I'm in Boeing, and I'm, I, I have my stop now to break even. Actually, it's just a little bit uh, underneath break even at that 178 even level. And then someone puts in the chat, time to buy Lucid. Yeah, well, when I'm not doing anything in terms of the trades, I'll look at any stock because why not? Like, why wouldn't I give a shot to look at it? Maybe it's doing something. And then you made me, so you made me look. Uh, you made me look. Lucid is doing absolutely, positively nothing. But the kind of nothing is somewhat interesting because it's still got a decent short flow and it cannot seem to break 250. So you're probably going to figure out, I'm going to say two things here. One, it's trying to make a bottom. If it can take out three, it could squeeze. But also if it takes 250, I'm probably going to be short that day. Uh, so I feel the same way about this that I do Rivian. 250 goes short. $10 goes yeah, short. So yeah. That's simple. Like, these are trend down. You've seen all the EV names. Sean brought up that graphic. Um, what was it? Nikola was the only one that was actually doing well this year. And you ask, well, how can Nikola possibly be doing well? Well, it's not. It's, it's, it's all relative. So, like, because it's, it's just a timing thing. Nikola just made that 60-cent bottom at the beginning of the year. That's it. Like, it's kind of flukish that that's even true, that Nikola is, is the strongest one. Just look at the chart. So it's, uh, it's a bit deceiving, but hey, it double bottom off 60 cents and it got back into a buck. So congratulations to anybody that for some reason decided Nikola was going to be a good buy. Maybe these things can bounce, but until that happens, they're short till they're not. Like I said, I was going to trail just under break even on Boeing, so Boeing comes out there. Much better short, shorting the pop after the news. When you get a news event like this, it's one of my favorite trades, because if you don't have the breakdown, let it come back up. There's your big volume spike, so now you're interested. You might have missed it. There is the wick to the upside. Comes into 180, VWAP, can't take it. Then there's the consolidation. Short it, short it to the consolidation point. I actually ended up trailing this instead of just getting out at 78, which hindsight will always be 2020. There were no levels to work off of from yesterday or anything like that. Uh, so then I re-entered the short. Should have been here. Like, if I look at this, it should have been, like, here, 178. But I didn't until 177.60. Got 60 cents there. Reloaded. Pretty much a flat trail. We got a decent move, but then we gave up a little bit. Uh, looking for that big flush in at the end of the day. Bowing down that 2%, still pretty nasty. And I think we want to work for the shorts until proven otherwise with Boeing. Another 2% day. Yikes. Uh, getting nasty there. Yeah, CPI leaked TT777 says, maybe... I feel like it, you get, it's so easy to be tinfoil hat when you get a reversal like that. I just think this is Bostic um, kind of rallying things with his talk there more than anything else. You know, if, someone's gonna, if someone wants to gamble because they think they have an in, that futures markets, you can move them around here and there. Uh, a lot of the leaks, sometimes you get that leak move and it's like right before the number comes out. Night before, it's very easy to talk yourself into that whole tinfoil hat of somebody must know something. I think we'll just stick to the simple example. We had a Fed speaker. Um, he made some bullish comments, and it rallied the market. And I think the lesson there would be you had to be really particular about when it is that you short it. Wait for the really big levels. Wait for that key time. We've got about two minutes to go here. Uh, what else we got going on? Where is the leak? I don't know where it is. I have no idea. Oh, yeah, crypto. Okay, I want to get, you know what, let's get, let's get to one thing here, because we didn't trade Coinbase today. And Coinbase is down 5%. And I keep saying it could go even further. I just wanted to check on the daily to be sure. But Coinbase has one of the more definable ranges in the last week and a half that is just giving you technical trades. 260, 254, 
250 legs. Look how good these levels have been. Like they've been just spot on. And it's like once you drew them, they're absolutely fantastic. So I think tomorrow, if any of these come into play for the short 50, 54, 60, I think it behooves me to take some trades. We did have it a couple of days ago. We didn't take any of it today. But this is the one I want to trade because it's showing you some pretty great defined levels. If you're going to trade technicals, worry about technicals. If you're going to trade news, worry about the news. In this case, I do care what Bitcoin does, but I care more about the levels that we're seeing uh, be fantastic there in Coinbase. Uh, a couple people in there saying NVIDIA long. We got under 60 seconds to the bell. The boys seem to have something... I'm guessing in Toronto to the long side. Uh, and there, I know what it is, Patty, uh, it could be big Patty Ice in there. Uh, some Toronto names making some moves. You guys are probably don't care about that. What you might care about is NVIDIA ending the day reclaiming 850. So NVIDIA down 2%, but it just said 850, it's back. This has been the pivot point for this stock. And I feel like nothing is going to be changed tomorrow. It died off the 850 level for a quick $10 move. And it's been a resistance all afternoon. It's time for it, the camera to get off of me. Get on to Adara. It is the last 10 seconds of a turnaround Tuesday. Uh, and post Eclipse Day as well. In three, two, Ooh, and one. Boy. Ring it. A healthy bell ring. You know what? Because the shorts were so good, NVIDIA was a top to bottom move of $45. It doesn't feel like it, but the NASDAQ is up 0.4% today. The ES closes up 0.17% today. So you actually have a green day for the market. You're gonna close above VWAP for NVIDIA as well, so uh, shout it out. That's what I love about the market. You can make a bunch of money short, which is exactly what happened. Like all my best trades were to the short side with the exception of, um, I suppose would have been Google, but overall the market's gonna end up up. That's the good thing about trading. There's excitement on the floor in the back going into the close. Hit the like, hit the subscribe. I'm giving an extra, you know what? Everybody here, hit the like button for Fabian today. Fabian was on the ones and twos all day by himself, parting it off there, doing yeoman's work on the ones and twos. Shout out to both Sharif and Adara, learn to trade. It's been an absolute banger of a week in terms of that segment as well with Sharif coming back and giving you it as all. Uh, we're here every single day along with Brendo. We love you, brother. Another great one with Frank. Timely. We always love having Frank on before we have a big number. We're going to get that CPI tomorrow. But you know what time it is. It's time for the market recap. You got the, techni you got the master technician, uh, Mr. Shannon, going to be coming on to join Sean. But you're also going to be able to go over some trade review, a little sticky note action as well. And uh, most importantly, if everyone can just tell Sean how good Travis Kelsey is and why he should feed me Let's call it a late first round pick for him. That'd be just fine. Let's go on to the desk. <laughs> what? It's Travis Kelsey. You can then cheer for Taylor Swift. Okay, fine, whatever. Uh, let's just make a reasonable trade. You know you could use a tight end. Let's go back to the Sean uh, for the market recap show. Go Chiefs? I don't know. Yeah, if he, if he goes, I mean, a sixth round pick, you know, um, yeah, all, all hardcore pass. No, we're having some fun. We'll, 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 we'll see about getting some Travis Kelsey uh, up in our life. But thank you so much for joining us right now on the Market Recap Show. We have a hell of a show lined up for you again. We have Brian Shannon uh, coming through again. I mean, come on. We'll talk all about Anchor VWAP. We'll talk about the state of the market. We'll talk about Comex. We'll talk about everything, metals, whatever you guys want to. I don't even big shout out to everybody that's here with me because, again, it is a real-time show happening right now for you as we will go into the market recap. And we had a nice little move there at the end of the day. Let's go over and have a quick look at the NASDAQ as these triple Qs start to go back upside here. Look at this little bump. Boom, in the last minutes of trade, we go bump in the night. I mean, Fed's Boston coming out tomorrow, or coming out today, talking about some of these numbers. Now remember, tomorrow, very, very interesting day. We're gonna have CPI data. We're gonna have PPI data on Thursday. I don't know what this number is gonna come out as, but if you're gonna look at something right here, let's just look at something that I just tweeted. I know this is a little bit early, but this is what's being expected for tomorrow. Uh, right into here. So these are the expectations for trade tomorrow.
Barclays. I don't know if you guys can see this. Let me zoom in a little bit. There it is. Uh, that's good. Okay. So three, 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 four, three, four, three, four, three, four. Can anybody say three, four? So it looks like right now, there it is. Shout out Fabian. Good job on that one. We'll get some calculations going through. What number are we expecting for tomorrow? Bank of America says three, three. Scotiabank, shout out, says three, five. Wells Fargo says three, five. I'm over here. Let's go a little lower. Let's go a little lower. Let's go 3-3 tomorrow. Thanks uh, for that as I'll zoom this back out and go back over to here. But you know what? I think the market might have agreed. Hey, if we get chilled out inflation, then maybe those rate cuts are back on the table one more time. Let's see. We don't know what the market's going to do. We had a great jobs or a hotter jobs number come through. Market reacting to that right now as there goes the triple Qs. Nicely cooking to the upside. Let's flip this over to a daily chart. Daily chart, all right, hold on with me. That should have flipped, but did not. There, let me see, now go back to a three minute. There it is, okay. So here's the daily chart. Daily chart, why isn't that flipping? Uh-oh, trade ideas, having a problem uh, going back and forth. But there's the daily on the queues, trying to make up some of those highs. What was moving around today? We talked about this yesterday with Mr. Michael Noss. Uh, let me see if I flip over again. Okay, three minutes working. Uh, this is the daily. Okay, good. Uh, three minutes. Hold on a second. Let me switch this to a day, and that stays a three. Okay, good. So right there, today we get a little bit of a bump up. We talked about this with Michael Noss yesterday, right? Look at this baseline there in UNG. I know it's not really the season as we come into warmer temperatures, but for right now, this looks like it wants to bounce. I'm kind of done talking about that. Gold just continues. I mean, boom, uh, for gold, uh, making new highs to the upside as well. Is this that Epic Pen? Where's my Epic Pen? I need to get that up here because it's good for drawing uh, right now. There we go. We'll open that up. And of course, oh, that was Zoom that I opened up by accident. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, but gold still making new highs. What about silver was something else that we talked about recently as well. Look at silver starting to break. Silver a little more interesting on the weekly chart, though, as we continue to go a little higher and higher. Here we go. This is the pen that we like right into here. So again, silver still looking to take out some of these past highs uh, up into there, up $25, $26. Silver now making that move. As we talked about that from Kitco coming out yesterday and saying silver actually has more industrial uses than gold. I think we knew that, but that could spark an upside move there in silver. Shout out to High Park. We have our coaches meeting. We've got on our little uh, bracelet here from my daughter that says Coach Sean. We have a good meeting there tonight, so we're going to get out of here real quick um, and get ready to rock and roll. No earnings on board here, but we are brought to you by, once again, the Benzinga platform. So let me call that over here and just show you. Getting your news, Benzinga Pro platform. As earnings or anything starts to drop into here, we'll get all of those plays for you immediately. But you might be asking, so what was today all about? Semiconductor and AI names really ruled the roost today. Um, take a look at NVIDIA, um, obviously on the weekly. Let's switch that back to a three minute chart. I mean, a pretty epic fall. We know Neil had that break of 850. That tanked down to 830. Wondering about a pickup now uh, for some NVIDIA. But the problem here is, look at this. We are still going a little higher on RSI. So we could still get bought to the high side right now. We do not get a divergence here today. AI, nice move to the upside there for NVIDIA. So some AI names coming into play there. With it closing near the top, looking at that 850, 853 coming into play again. But Microsoft, investments, Alphabet, Broadcom partnerships. So, I mean, more and more continue to go. Here we go right here. You know what might be good to look at? The heat map. Let's see what was heated up. So there's Google right there on some of that talk. So Google, take, take me off for a minute uh, there, Fabian. Let's, uh, yeah, the other way around if you can. There we go, yeah, so there's Google right there. We'll talk about Google with Axion Project with ARM. So Google starting to go to the upside there, right? No Broadcom on here. We'll find out what Broadcom is doing uh, later on. Uh, Microsoft with the nice move today, but only up 0.4. Again, Microsoft and Japan AI investments. Meanwhile, Gaudi 3 uh, coming into play as well. Look at Meta 
down 0.78 today. Financials struggled ahead of major bank earnings, which come on Friday. So if we're going to go over find here, where is our bank sector? There it is right here. Banks struggled a little bit. Berkshire down. JP Morgan down that 1%. WFC coming on Friday, also down that half percent as well. We didn't have too many major Fed speakers until the end of the day, and we saw what that happened. We await tomorrow's CPI, followed by uh, Thursday's PPI number, but there's Google again. Let's get rid of that. Nice movement upside there on Google. As if you look back at a daily chart here for Goog, nice move back up to the upside, taking out some of those day highs. This was a top stock for me today. Google, one of my best. You know what? Because it's Brian Shannon Day, let me just draw an anchor down here on this low for Google. This is a um, anchored VWAP back into that October low. We're still nowhere near that. Let me see. Can I, I think I can just draw another one here. Let me click that off. What about an anchor from here, that most recent low? Uh, I think I got to delete this, actually, before I draw another one. But we'll talk more about this with Brian coming up very, very soon. There's a new anchor. So, yeah, with the 50 period. So, off of that recent bottom, Google really cooking. Nicely done up to the upside today for Google. So, that was a nice name as well, leading the way in for the rest. What else do you want to talk about? Banks. All right. We looked at XLF. So XLF, again, a major ETF, probably the one that most of us know besides KRE for regionals. XLF taking a little bit of a sleeping. Uh-oh. Look what we see here. Look at RSI. Way back. RSI, a heavy pullback in right now. Coming into that 50 point where we've had some dip buy opportunities off of a relatively weak RSI. But as you continue to hold out, you get this divergence pulling back in. I'm thinking, let me take a quick look. Let's clear this and just, oopsies, and have a, the problem is I gotta keep going back to this. Go back over here to JP Morgan again. See if we see something similar. Yeah, I mean, all these banks trying to pull back in. I should have done a little bit of a study on this as far as bank earnings are concerned. Let me have that for you. I don't even know what day it is anymore. So yesterday was Eclipse Day and my parents' anniversary. So that's the 8th. So the 9th, Tuesday. Guys, whenever you've been on air for six, seven hours and your own voice is giving you a headache, I just want to thank everybody for staying tuned uh, with me right now. We do have Brian Channing coming through. And again, I don't have Hydration Nation, but let's just cheers that up. Let's take a second and take a quick little breather here and take a drink. Bear with me for one second. Hmm. Check out the merch. This is a Trader TV Live milk jug. Mm. Yeah, Fabian's laughing. This is like a milk thing. It's like an old, they did deliver. That's right. Okay, boomer, right? That's right. What do you got milk now? And you get the, the gallons, you get the bags. You know what? Shout out to everybody. I mean, how many people are watching right now? We are streaming live absolutely everywhere. 2,700 of you. You know what? I could ask Brian this question. There's no bagged milk, I don't think, in the United States. I mean, here in Canada, you can't even, like, when you go to the store, you don't get, like, that jug. You know, like, there's none of that, man. You get liter bags of milk, like, actual... You know what, I'm gonna Google this. I mean, I think a lot of you guys uh, have seen this. Bags uh, of milk, Canada. Just to show you guys, uh, there it is, here it is. Shout out Nielsen. Oh man, uh, this is just funny because this is exactly, you know, here in Canada, and by the way, this is a trading show. Oh no, Fabian's over there. Fabian, no one can see my screen. Go switch it, baby, uh, right now. So Ramin's not here, it's only Fabian. But you got to have these milk containers uh, right here. And then you get the bag of milk. So you get 2%. And then this is what it looks like here in our grocery store, actually. Shout out right now. So you get the cartons like this. So there are some of that. But the big quantities are in bags of milk. Am I going to get, like, people are going to be like, what the hell is this guy Googling bags of milk uh, right now? But shout out uh, to everybody there in the chat. Put some ones up if you guys have heard of bags of milk right now. Seems like, hey, what's up, Dream Ride Music? Seems like Sean is tripping today. Really? I don't think you've watched the show enough, man. This, is, uh, this ain't tripping by, this is the status quo. If anything, I'm more chilled out today. And actually, I went over something here today. Let's just call, we'll, we'll call this back. And I actually want to show something here as I continue to talk. Let's give a quick look and a big shout out to Trade Ideas because how cool is this? 
How cool is this layout? Where right now you can see tons of green on the board today. Green everywhere. What these are are sector watches. So right here, consumer discretionary, Etsy leading the way, up 3.9. And then down here, 70% of consumer discretionary names today are in the green. So that's pretty cool. And look at this, man, this ETF watch list down here, TAN leading the way up here, XBI. We talked a little bit about the biotech names, led today by Moderna, right? Here it is down here, XLV, there's Moderna popping up on the list as well. What I was getting at though today, Something that I believe is very important is, and I was talking about this with Adara, look at Moderna here, shout out to, uh, maybe I'll talk to Brian about this. It looks like Moderna trying to break out a little bit as well right here on the daily chart. That's getting going. I actually really like this name with a short float of 6.59%, but I feel like it's very important. We had some trades at the end of the day, and that is, is to focus on what you do best. Um, show, show the screen here so I can talk to the people here quickly. You know, don't get carried away hearing too much noise. We saw that move happen in the futures at the end of the day, and we got run over in Apple. So we just, we took that deep breath, and we've noticed that when you have a trade the wrong way, the best thing to do is just respect the levels that you've already set out, okay? Respect your risk management that you already have in place. How many of us, and I'll say a shout out to my friend there over at Tim Hortons, <laughs> Maybe I am all over the place. He told me that he had gotten blown out too much because he's sitting there, he's trading, and he's getting frustrated. So he switched over to swing trading a little bit longer time frames so he's not frustrated with the positions. If his levels hit, they hit. If he gets stopped out, he gets stopped out. He found day trading, and especially what we do, scalping. I had over 200 fills today. It's very easy to get stubborn into your trades. So please, and I mean, I'll just, I'll, let, me, let me call this up right here. Let me call up Apple real quick and then I'm gonna call up my good friend because I don't make it someone like Brian. I don't make anybody wait on this show because we roll out the best guests for you. We don't make anybody wait on any show, but I'm definitely not doing that to Brian. Look what happened right here. Um, Apple, good bottom picks, right? We were long Apple, it was great. We had some good trades, long Apple. We had long Apple again and then we lost. I was frustrated here because the long I thought was right. And look what happened as soon as we got stopped out. Again, respecting our day low levels. This level all day, every day, I'm respecting that. I was looking at this as being a, a hold. It was a hold at this very bottom, but not into that bottom wick. I did not want to be part of that. And unfortunately, I made the bottom wick again. Got stopped out. Then I was like, oh man, we got a short, we got a short. Stopped out again. We went 0 for 2 there. Threw back some money on the day on Apple. But you know what we did instead? And I'm just gonna say this, look at this, Brian. We went over, we said, you know what? Let me try to figure this trade out. So we went back over into the TQQ and I said, if the market's gonna rip like this, let's let it just go all the way up and then let's stick with a short that we could understand. And that was this break right here earlier on in the day when the NASDAQ broke lower, we wanted to go and find some piece that we could short again. So we started some purple shorts into that level. We're able to get the piece that we wanted right into here. And then as the rest goes, monster trade back in for that trade. Let us make our money back and put us into a comfortable level. So as I say all the time, man, respect the levels that you're in and trade your game plan. And I can't think of anybody more perfect to call on than right now, my good friend and a friend of the show, Mr. Brian Shannon, let's bring him on. Woo, hey, Mr. Brian Shannon, oh, we got a hat on today. That's looking real good. Did you get a chance to check that eclipse out yesterday? Uh, there wasn't really much of it here. I mean, it was, it was kind of cool. We, we've had better ones in Denver. Yeah, I feel the same way. It was kind of cool for that. A lot of hype. And I kind of equated it to like a sporting event. It's like you love to go there and you get sort of all geared up. You get like that pregame going. Then the game happens and then the game's over. And then you're like, okay. You know, hopefully you're lifting a trophy at the end of it at all uh, today. It, but It kind of felt like my team lost yesterday in, in regards to that. I, yeah, I kind of feel a lot like of let that. Down for all the hype. 
I kind of feel that way as well. Um, all right, thank you for joining me again here today. We had a nice little bump up there at the end of the day. Um, some, I don't know if it's short covering or not. I was mentioning, I get a feel that maybe CPI may come a little cooler than expected, and we'll see what that can do to the market. But Bostic coming up, talking still about rate cuts, leading us to a nice little move there at the end of the day. Did you happen to catch any of that or any thoughts about maybe what we saw there at the end? I didn't catch it at the end. I had to go pick up my car, but uh, someone uh, T-boned me a couple of weeks ago. I finally oh. got that back. Okay. Um, but it was uh, in the morning, I got uh, some of that short. So that was nice off of the open. Uh, but but other than that, I kind of stayed away from the indices. And I think what we're seeing here, Sean, is just a whole bunch of indecision. Right. We've got you know the, the governors talking out of both sides of their mouth. And, um, you know, the price action, you know, bullishly, though, you can say it's correcting through time. It's really not going down. It's it's making grud begrudgingly going down and maybe sucking in short sellers. And like you said, that end of the day action could be those shorts saying, you know what, it's not going down today. I'm going to get out before the close. I mean, it's like we made back the whole, I mean, look at this chart on the SPY. I know you have the SPYs up as well there, Brian, but we made back like the whole day, right back into like those levels that you were shorting. An absolutely remarkable move back for Bostic just coming out like one vote. You know what I mean? Like, come on, give me a break. I'm pretty sure we had the dot plot and I think we're, we're about there. Two to three cuts. Are you hearing anything different than that um, on the rate cut side of things? I'm thinking two. I don't think no. It's like a 2% chance for no rate cuts, but I guess that's still a possibility. I really don't pay too much attention okay. to it. It seems to change all the time, and my opinion means nothing. So right. we'll just trade I'm just going to continue to follow price action, Sean. Yep, yep. I, I agree 100%. And, and, and that was a talk that we had, and maybe you heard me. I feel it's very, very important that when we're sticking to price action, and especially when we're reading charts, technical analysis, all of that kind of the same thing here, we got to also respect our profit areas, but we also have to respect our stops because out of nowhere, you're gonna get these moves. And if you hold on to something, you could get run over. And I know that's a big part of how you trade as well. Yeah, again, especially like in these indices, you know, it's just been back and forth. Um, you know, it's always about too, I talk a lot about the personality of the stock. Right. And if you have a stock with a 5% daily ATR versus a stock with a 2% uh, average daily ATR, you've got to trade them different right. and be yep. aware of the, the differences in the personality of a, a crazy little biotech stock and a, uh, you know, an IBM or a Disney or something like that. I like that average true range. That's just another little tidbit there. And thank you for dropping that. As I was talking to you, we have 2,300 watching right now. Plus we're live on Instagram right now. We're live on, are we live on Twitch? Yes. Twitch as well. So there you go. Um, TikTok, I'm not sure, but we're all over the place right now. So thank you, Brian, for coming through <laughs> one more time. Um, yeah, a lot, of, a lot of people loving you in the chat. So thank you so much one more time for coming through at Alpha Trends. Okay, anything interesting on any charts maybe that you're seeing start to set up? Um, I'll give it to you. I see that you have the SPY set up now. Anything particular uh, that we should look for ahead of some of those numbers coming through tomorrow, 8.30, and then PPI again on Thursday? Well, I think on SPY that you've got, you know, we're still in a daily uptrend. You just can't deny that. We're kind of consolidating through time, a choppy downtrend here a little bit the last week and a half, but overall it's still bullish and we've got all kinds of catalysts coming. We've got the PPI, the CPI, we've got earnings reports just starting yep. again. So um, I'm just going to continue to take it as I always do, one stock at a time try to manage risk. And I did tease this uh, segment here, Sean, with a good looking swing trade setup. But before I do that, mm -hmm. so so we can really tease them, um, let's talk about one of the stocks that I we were talking about last week, which was GLNG. Right. Um, that was a purchase over here. And I, the, the reason I wanna bring this one up is I have a rule that I uh, always tell people to do at Alpha Trends, which is we never set our stop before the market opens. Always wait five minutes before the stock opens. So for instance, in GLNG, I was long over here, you know, just the, the right buy as it made the higher high above the flat to rising five day moving average. Yep. Took a third off somewhere over in here. And then my stop was initially on half of it was under here. Well, you can see what happened that day it opened below that and within five minutes it made its low. Ah. And if I had set the stop prior to the open, I would have had my stock stolen from me there. Right. Same thing happened two days later, right over here. So 
if you set your stops before the market opens, always give them that first five minutes. And then the stop goes below the low of the first five minutes. So that allowed me to stay in. So I sold half of it here today and half of the balance there today. So it was a decent little trade, but yep. it's more about the lesson of don't sell uh, or don't set your stops before the market opens. And certainly just, you know, give it a little bit of time to for things to settle down before you decide to set a stop. Well, that's, I mean, absolutely fantastic advice right there. I mean, especially in a lot of our viewers world as well. I mean, I, I've what I've really grown as a trader is to try to let the market settle down a little bit, especially in those first five minutes. And look, if I like a long and the stocks come in, I'll take it, but there's no way we'll take it in a maximum share size position because you don't need those sort of those bigger hands to push the stock in a direction and then get us lesser hands taken out. So great, absolute great advice. I'm definitely uh, keeping that. And the other advice that you've given me too is um, when there's a gap, fade that back into view app so i really like that one hey have you heard of bagged milk before or am i just tripping on that as well like milk uh, bags do they come in different sizes no no they don't it's, like no it's like a one liter. it's four liters of milk and there's three of them so i guess a liter and a third or so which i don't know what that works out to a gallon but it's really weird eh and we get those little containers and you got to snip them and then uh, yeah it's really really strange uh there but anyways um yeah so you never heard of them basically no, I've never oh, okay, well, when you milk visit, bags. when you visit, we'll go to like a grocery store and we'll buy um, some bagged milk. But uh, great job on that, um, GLNG. Big shout out to you on that one. Um, you want to look at Google? Did we talk about the swing trade? Um, yeah, what, uh, GLNG? Is that, that's no, a new one, a new setup. You have a new setup then? That's what I was teasing. So let's I'm go. Sure there's people saying, come on, are we going to get to this or what? Okay, let's um, go, people. NCNO. Here's the, the here's the play. Encino. They just reported earnings. Uh, we can start here on this 15 minute time frame because that's where I'm at. Yep. This was an earnings report right here. So as always, we want to set an anchor to that price, and you can see that there's our anchor. Initially, it acted as support, and then we saw some aggressive selling here. And if you actually, I actually looked at the news for whatever reason, there was a pretty good chunk of insider selling on that day. Um, and you know what? It really doesn't matter who sells, I don't think. It's what happens after the fact. Right. So we saw that the anchored v the VWAP from the earnings report held its supply right here. This morning, again, it held its supply. But while that happened, the five-day moving average went from declining to flattening out and has the chance to turn higher. We have higher lows with this right now. And to me, it's it gets above today's high. You can buy the stock likely with a stop below today's low if you want to give it more room under here. And above that level, that gets the that makes the higher high above that flat to rising five-day moving average. It's back above the anchor, the average price paid since the earnings report came out. So that means it absorbed all the supply. The buyers have retaken control. And what's more important, uh, impressive is this. This is the weekly chart. And this is kind of what I had outlined for subscribers to Alpha Trends because we've been waiting for this setup, which is we, you know, the earnings report was really big volume and we've pulled back to this prior little band of resistance right in here. This resistance is now holding a support on later volume. Now the next move I think is likely to head up towards the anchor from this point right here. And then the next anchor of interest is from the IPO up here near 50. So here's a stock that I think looks great for a swing trade. By the way, the earnings were up, uh, they were 21 cents versus 4 cents a year ago. Revenues were up uh, 13%. And as I always say, that tells me there's people who trade fundamentally who are interested in this right. stock. And that's necessarily that I think it's so great. But when you back that up with this chart, and then you start to say, well, is that a shoulder? Is that a head? Is that a shoulder? It all comes together to look like a low risk, high probability continuation of the upside. So our outs are down there in those mid to low 30s, where some of those other uh, indicators were there, or is this something that you're going to be willing to hold for a little bit I, low? Yeah, for, for, for a swing trade initially, I think maybe your worst case stop goes under here. Right, okay. In, and then as it breaks higher, I, I think you quickly raise your stop up underneath today's low. Right. Um, and you could probably even get away with a stop under today's low if it breaks out. Because, you know, based on the definition of trend, higher highs and higher lows, if we make a higher high, 
Well, then our stop goes below the most recent relevant higher low. That's this right here. So if it breaks that higher high, comes back down below that low, our new emerging uptrend no longer exists. The definition simply isn't there. We're not setting our stop 3%, 5%, whatever. We're basing it on here we have a higher, a higher low, another higher low. If we get the higher high above that rising, no, that anchored down. VWAP from the earnings and the five-day moving average, buyers are clearly in control. It's their game to lose. If it breaks back below that 3450, in my mind, they've lost it. So why stick around? Well, just, just an idea right there that all of our viewers can go find it at Alpha Trends for sure there on Twitter and everywhere. Thank you so much, Brian, for that idea. And just quickly, you got that sort of an idea. Did that come across your radar because of that earnings report on an extended amount of volume potentially there? Um, or was this something that you sort of noticed was basing out? Because I've never traded this name and it's not, you know, pretty low volume. Well, today is actually 2 million, so it's actually pretty good uh, right there, but a nice looking name and great on the weekly chart, looking like it break, broke out, but did that show up on one of your scanners or what sort of gave you the initial thought there because it's a great look? Yeah, great question. So all of my scanning is done manually. I don't really look for uh, anything in particular, but uh, you know, sometimes during the day when I'm bored, I'll go through stocks that are up on big volume and that sort of thing. And I think I noticed this maybe a day or two after the earnings report. And then I pulled up a market Smith chart where I could see what the fundamentals were quickly and saw that they were, you know, it was an earnings report that was the catalyst. So it tells me the fundamental crowd is interested in this. Maybe the insider just, you know, wants to buy a new yacht. He sold like $40 yeah. million dollars worth or something like that. But uh, that stock has been absorbed by the market. So it's looking like it's time to go high and continue higher. Maximum trading gains with anchored VWAP. Absolutely fantastic. This has got some bookmarks in here. We've got some, um, what do they call it when they, uh, deer? No, dog not, ear. Dog ear. Deer ear. Like, what am I even doing? I got to get out of here. Uh, but yeah, it's been passed around the trading floor and it's absolutely fantastic. So I want to thank you once again um, for coming on and sharing all of that. And a great trade. We'll check back on NCNO next week. But until then, Brian, have yourself a fantastic week. Hopefully we'll check you next week. And good luck with these prints. Good luck with some of these trades. Great. Thanks, Sean. Thank Thanks. you, everybody. Thanks, Brian. That's it right there. It's Trader Talking. Wow. I mean, there you go. Thank you, Michelle, Mir, and everybody in the chat there. Such a nice tip, such a great guest. Um, and that's what we're going to be doing here. I want to thank Brian again uh, for coming through. I mean, not much else to say about that. Great trade idea. Go find him. Brian Shannon, great book, Anchored VWAP. Uh, we use it here all the time. And uh, he just gave you a couple of examples of where exactly you can um, find trades like that. So a great call there. Thank you so much, Brian, for coming through one more time. And then just tomorrow, I tweeted this out. This is what's expected. So get locked and loaded, man. It's going to be 3433. Three, three. We're really excited for tomorrow's CPI. We'll have it live. I mean, Brendan will be there. Sharif will be here tomorrow at 8.30. Look, normally what we do right now is we talk a little bit about the sticky notes and about different things. I got to run one more time. This show's only meant to be a half hour. I want to thank everybody for, we're going to do roll call still. There's a couple tweets that I want to show you just real quick. This might be something that's interesting to you. If you're watching on the main show, you already know about this. How in the world is Nikola the number one EV stock this year? Well, um, I'm just going to trust this chart as being right. But there it is, Nikola, up 25%. Every other EV name that, pardon? Uh, that you could think of is on here for a red spot. So not an amazing performance for EV names here so far. And by the way, I meant to talk about this. Uh, yeah, get my mug off just for one quick second. There it is, S&P 500 daily trading volume. It's lowest since Black Friday. And look at everybody as we all look up at the eclipse. So we were talking about that yesterday. Black Friday, first that's the lowest trading event. Again, there's a lot of holidays surrounding that, what people take the Friday off, so on and so forth. But this was a random Monday in April, and there it is right there, April the 8th, one of second lowest uh, volume day of the year. So no surprise there. I hope everyone um, did not receive any eye damage or anything looking there uh, up at the sun yesterday. It was relatively uneventful here in Toronto or the GTA, but... I, it wasn't that such a shame. I was outside with the wife after we were just in the backyard with the dog, and then it was like, it was beautiful. 
I was like, oh my God, imagine if this is what it was. It was cloudy here. Look, for everybody here at Trader TV Live, I'm Sean Katina. Make sure you follow me at Trader TV Sean. I give a big shout out to my guest, Brian Shannon, once again for coming out. And man, we had another great day trading, and I'm just glad to be here with everybody. We're on quite a streak, and we're going to see if we can continue that tomorrow. We'll wait for that number. Join us tomorrow at 8.30. But I almost forgot one thing, didn't I? Ooh, man, I almost got in trouble from the, from the masses right there. Shout out to Bears vs. Bulls. Thank you so much. But right now, let's not let everybody go without doing a roll call. Traders, stay late. And this is the latest the show will be right now because we're doing roll call. What's up for Fugazi, Beret? It's a Fugazi. I mean, was it today? I don't know. We'll see tomorrow what happens with the futures. Uh, that move could have been true. We, maybe we were wish we were buying some of those levels at 3 o'clock. A nice move to the upside. Hey, what's up? Josh Lyles is in the building. Uh, uh, Valentin, what's up? Deuces, we out. Jimbo Slice, beats to that as well. Caputi, Henry Chung, thank you so much for your nice tweet today. Shout out to South Korea as well. What's up to Henry Chung right there? Bears vs. Bulls is here. Mike Breeze is here. Um, John, For Profit, Sam, No Jack, Travel Buddy, Sebastian, uh, Joe, is, Sebastian's always here. Take Profit, Tom, hey, thank you for joining, man. The Piper is still here. That's really good to see Brandon. Coffee and crypto. You have crypto and you have coffee. You're doing pretty good. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see everybody tomorrow at 8.30. But for now, I'm Sean Katine. This is Trader TV Live. Thanks, Fabian. I'll see you tomorrow.